Okay, give me one second. Let me go live on uh, IG. Give me one second. Come on, go live. I can hear somebody's heartbeat. There we go. All right. We are alive. What's up, everybody? All right. Welcome uh, to another session of the Gov Cloud Podcast Wednesday Hot Topic Show, uh, live out of San Francisco uh, on this beautiful uh, Wednesday night. As you guys can see, we have a full panel of ladies and fellas here tonight. We have another great hot topic for you guys, and we have another great show uh, for you guys planned for tonight. But as always, the people who tune into my live show, if you see value in the content, uh, you guys already know what to do. The best way to support the channel is to smash that like and subscribe button. Uh, real quick, I see you gas mask already in the live chat. I appreciate you gas mask always showing love and support on IG and also on YouTube. Thank you so much. But nevertheless, don't forget this is a virtual. Like, uh, this is a virtual um, online public show. A lot of you guys reach out to me asking me how do I join the podcast. I'm not from the Bay. I'm not from California. This is the way to join. Is my Wednesday shows is it's uh, open. Uh, for you guys to join virtually. So the link is in the description of the YouTube video. So if you're watching this from IG, X, Twitch, or Facebook, uh, come over to YouTube. The link is in the description below on the YouTube video. Click on that link and you'll be able to jump on and be part of the conversation. You guys already know I'm always open to hear from different perspectives. Uh, what do we agree, disagree, but ultimately come together and figure out solutions and stop complaining and whining about the opposite sex. So you guys already know how I roll when it comes to my content. But nevertheless, I appreciate you guys. Click on that link. Uh, quick uh, shout out to my sponsor, Global Impact Financial. Uh, they are they are a financial services. Um, if you do need financial services, reach out to them, Global Financial Impact. Uh, her team, shout out to Savannah. Savannah is the one that is the uh, leader of that uh, company. But she, if you need help, if you need help with tax advantage, advantage wealth strategies, college funds for your kids, debt management. If you need to learn how to be a family bank, life insurance and living benefits, legacy planning in our culture and business ownership programs, definitely reach out to Savannah. The link is in the description. Uh, shout out to her. And also did the podcast with her and her team last Saturday. And the podcast is already up on my page. If you definitely want to check out the great conversations we're having uh, with that team about, fun, about financial services, but also a lot of the things that uh, we experience within the Pacific Island of the community. But nevertheless, I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much, Savannah. Shout out to you and to my sponsor. But nevertheless, uh, but that's pretty much all my YouTube stuff. Let's get that live chat popping. I see you lovely world on the live chat. Let's get active. Let me know what you guys think about the tonight's topic on the live chat. Uh, but don't be a ninja watcher. I know there's a lot of, don't be a creep watching this by yourself and not participating. I know there's a lot of you guys watch this silently in your rooms. Uh, but definitely come out closet and start participating and say something on the live chat. It is a live stream, so have some fun. Let me know your feedback. Always appreciate your feedback and your opinions that you guys drop on the live chat. But besides that, that's pretty much all my YouTube stuff. Thank you so much. And of course, if you do want us to respond to any questions or topics, drop it through a super chat. I'll be able to put it on the screen. And we as a panel can be able to respond to you guys. Uh, if you have any questions or topics that you want to ask us as a panel, or if you do want to ask it's a specific guest on the panel. And of course, if you just want to donate to the channel, show some love, reciprocate the work I put in for you guys, I'll drop it through a super chat. I'll definitely give you a shout out as well. But pretty much, that's pretty much it. That's all my YouTube stuff. Thank you so much. I appreciate you guys for tuning into the live show. But let's get active. But let me pass it back to the panel. Uh, shout out to the panel. All right. We got a great panel tonight, and we have a great topic to discuss. But let me pass it to the panel. Uh, start with the ladies. Ladies, thank you so much for making the time. But if you guys don't mind, if you want to give yourselves a quick intro for everybody out there, and uh, and then we'll go to the fellas. So I'll start with you. Melissa, go ahead and give yourself a, a quick intro, who you are, what do you do for everyone out there. Go ahead, Melissa. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Melissa, and I'm from Texas. And I currently teach speech um, there down in Texas. I do have a master's in communication, so that's why I teach speech. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, Melissa. I pass it to you. Uh, and Lisa, we trust. Go ahead, Lisa. Uh, my name is Lisa. I am 28. I'm from Chicago. And I 
have a bachelor's in philosophy and a minor in sociology. Uh, currently, I run a custom cakes business and trying to get that moving. All right. Thank you so much, Lisa. We'll keep it moving. I'll pass it to you, Aubrey. Go ahead and give yourself a quick intro. I'm Aubrey. I'm up in uh, Northern uh, California. I'm a medical esthetician. I own my own med spa 23 years this month. All right. Shout out to you. Thank you so much, Aubrey. All right. Keep it up. All right. Thank you so much for being on part of tonight's panel. I'll pass it to you, T. T, go ahead and give yourself a quick intro for everyone out there. Hi, everyone. My name is T. I'm from Los Angeles, California. I'm a singer, songwriter, and actress, and I work for a nonprofit for education. All right. Thank you so much, T. Good to have you on tonight's panel. And last but not least, for the ladies, Sahana, go ahead and give yourself a quick intro. Hi, my name is Sahana. I'm 22 years old. I live in Utah and I just graduated college. I did a degree in like applied math and economics, but I also do hair and beauty content. All right. Congrats. Congrats on your graduation. Thank you so much for making the time. I really appreciate you being on tonight's pod and we'll pass it to the fellas tonight. I'll start with you, uh, Jerk. Go ahead and give yourself a quick intro. All right. I'm the sophisticated jerk. I'm from Fargo, North Dakota. And I work, I'm a bartista at a Starbucks. So now nah, I'm a senior procurement executive. I'm from Virginia. All right. <laughs> All right. Shout out to you, Jerk. Thank you so much. And I'll pass it to you, Manic. Go ahead and give yourself a quick intro. What up, y'all? I'm Manic. Uh, I'm the Manic genius. I go by Manic. I work in acquisitions. And uh, yeah, you, you'll get to know more about me as the conversation kind of goes. All right. All right. Shout out to you, fellas. Thank you so much for making the time. And uh, let me let me add one more thing. I, I'm a master yeah. at communication. Um, I don't have any degrees to show it, but uh, absolute master. All right. We'll see. Uh, we'll see tonight. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> hey, shout out to Melissa with all the degrees over there. We see that. I know, right? Yeah, Melissa right. out there killing. You didn't it. have to rub it in our face, though. I know. I was going to say that applied mathematics and economics. I think I'm going to enjoy this panel. All right. All right. No worries. business owner and Aubrey. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's going to be, it's going to be good. All right. But shout out to the panel. Thank you so much. We have a great panel and I definitely agree. Gas mass. Yeah. We definitely have a great panel here tonight and I see you the UK economist. Hey, good to see you always tuning all the way from England. I know it's early for you, but I always appreciate you for getting up early in the morning just to watch this show. So I really appreciate your dedication. Thank you so much to UK Economist. And I see you, Damon, in the back. I'm, I'm about to add you in. But yeah, the topic we're going to be discussing tonight is uh, can modern women handle dating a high value man? So let me just play this clip. This clip I saw on TikTok, it went viral, thousands of comments, and there was a lot of uh, debate and discourse between the men and women uh, debating this topic. So I'm excited to have this uh, conversation between the panel tonight to see what you guys have to say. And then I see you, Celia. Hey, what's up, Celia? Good to see your fellow Tongan sister uh, on the live chat. Uh, uh, but thank you so much. Good to see you in the live chat, Celia. But let me play this clip real quick. So this is the clip I want to play uh, that I saw that went viral. Um, and of course, as you guys are reacting to this clip, definitely let me know what you guys think on the live chat as you're reacting to this clip. And then I'll pass it back to the panel to give uh, let you guys let me know what you guys think. Uh, what's your opening statements and thoughts about tonight's topic? So let me play the clip real quick. Give me one second. And there we go. They want to date a high volume man until he starts calling you out for not taking responsibility, before he starts holding you accountable, before he has higher standards for you than you have for yourself. We're talking about, oh, date a high value man. It's so, this is what you do to have to attract a high value man. But I've never heard anyone talk about like actually dating a high value man takes a totally different kind of woman. It's not for the weak. I have other friends who are dating like very loving, very successful, perfectionist, ambitious men and it is not for the week all right so that was the clip uh that i saw and uh it was interesting to see the comments between the men and women that were talking about and discussing this clip but uh, i'm interested to hear what you guys have to say you know this is a term a buzzword i do hear online from a lot of women 
uh, not only online, but also uh, a lot of the podcasts I've done virtually, but also uh, live on studio. Uh, that's a term that I've always heard for a lot of women to say they want to date a, a high value man. That's the man that they want. All right. So um, I see you, Damien. I better add Damien in. Damien, good just, good, thank you for jumping on as a public guest. But uh, yeah, let me pass it back to the panel. You know, what do you guys think? What's your what's your thoughts about, um, you know, can you know, a lot of women say online that they want a, you know, a lot of the things that she mentioned, I want a, a ambitious, successful, uh, good, high value man, but uh, uh, can women really handle that type of man? The man that is successful, the man that has standards, the man that is good, uh, the man that has good qualities and good values. So. A lot of women online and they say that they, this is the type of man that they want and only want to date. There's a lot of women out there saying online uh, they will not date the average guy. They only want to date a high value man. So I don't have a problem with people's preferences. Go out there and pursue anything you want in life. But ultimately for me is, are you willing to put in the work for the outcome and the things that you want in life? So that high value man is not just going to fall on your lap. All right. So at the end of the day, let me know what you guys think. And uh, before I pass it to the panel, shout out to Niha. Hey, good to see you, Niha. First time seeing you on the live chat. All right, Niha. And then, of course, uh, appreciate Leah. Thank you for the love. And don't forget, as you guys see, Damon just jumped in. So if you do want to jump on as a virtual guest, click on that link. Um, and you'll be able to jump on as a virtual guest. But let me pass it back to the ladies. Ladies, if you don't mind, uh, can you do me two things on your opening statement? Uh, let me know what you think about the topic. But also, can you define? Can you also define to me, uh, to the panel, and to the show tonight, uh, what is your definition uh, of high value man? So, what is your perspective on to, what is what is your opening thoughts about the topic? But also, what is your definition of what a high value man is? I would like to hear that, and also for everyone that's watching the show. All right, so let me start with you, uh, Lisa. I'll start with you, Lisa, to start it off uh, tonight. So, Lisa, what do you think about? Uh, what's your reaction to the video? What do you think about the topic? Can modern women handle dating a high value man? But also, Lisa, what is your also your definition? What is a high value man to you? Go ahead, Lisa. Start us off. Okay. So I would say that my definition of a high value man is someone who is financially secure, ambitious, physically attractive, uh, and like emotionally evolved for the average man. Uh, and as far as the topic, I kind of do. Unfortunately, and myself is included in this, I feel like emotionally, that's where women, the modern woman might have the issue. As far as like physicality, that can always be adjusted. Financially, I think women are in their bag right now. So I don't think that's an issue. I think emotionally, like, uh, but we working on that too, because a lot of women are going to therapy and we're getting our stuff together. So I think overall, if we could give a percentage, I would say like, 100 being everybody ready, I would say we like an 85, 75. The average woman, once we get to the emotional, we'll be good. That's the only thing I think we really overall have to work on. Okay. All right, no worries. And Lisa, Will, do you can you hit that uh, cap button? No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> All right, no worries. And, and, and Lisa, before I pass a quick question, uh, do you prefer dating a high value man? Is that the only type of man that you want to date? From my definition, yes, not the standard. I yeah, your, your definition, your definition. Yeah. Okay, okay. So you only want to date the high value man. All right, perfect. Thank you so much, Lisa. Appreciate it. We'll keep it moving. Uh, I'll pass it to you, T. Uh, T, what's your reaction to the video? What is your thoughts about the topic? And also, what is your definition of a high value man? Go ahead, T. Okay, so I think I said at the beginning of this, like, I'm not... I live under a damn rock. So I think like understanding like the general societal view of like what a high value man is kind of confuses me a bit. It seems like subjective to me as a whole. Um, personally, I feel like a high value man is someone who does, I, I agree with what Lisa said, like holds himself accountable emotionally. I think that's something that's like more so than the hot buzzer topic of high value man is emotional intelligence right now. At least I feel like it is amongst women too. So I definitely agree with that. Um, I think a lot of people have a tendency to mistake high value for same values. Like, oh, if they don't value the same things that we do, then they're immediately like a low value person in general. Um, and I think that's just insane. <laughs> um, the video, 
I've, I've never really seen a video like that before. I don't, I, I think it's my algorithm doesn't show stuff like that. <laughs> Cause I, I feel like maybe it's the way she was sounding was like a little like, okay, it's, it's giving like, maybe like pick me a little bit. I think she probably could have, <laughs> I, I feel bad. I don't know. I feel bad. Like it, it was giving like, okay, well like this is, it was, I feel like she was still going from the perspective of like what a man wants a woman to say um, or what she thinks they want her to feel or something like that. So I feel like the video was kind of like weird, <laughs> but um, as a whole, yeah, that's just, that's just what I think about like high value men and standards and stuff like that. I really think it's like a subjective thing. Um, in general, I think that I don't, I mean, I want to say I really don't care about high value and, and money and stuff like that. Like, to be honest, I dated a loser for like six years. That's a long time. So it's like, I feel like I, I don't really, <laughs> I, I, um, I can't, I can't say I, I, I'm into high value men because that was a whole thing, you know, and that just ended last year for me. So, I mean, I might have some different perspectives depending on where the rest of this conversation goes from everyone else. Cause I mean, high value men is, not really something that I that I've known for a long time here. <laughs> hey, we appreciate your honesty. Yeah, yeah. No worries, no worries. Thank you so much, T. Uh, appreciate that. Uh, we'll keep it moving. I'll pass it to you, Aubrey. Aubrey, what's your reaction to the video? Um, what What's your thoughts about the topic? And also, what is your definition of a high value man? Go ahead, Aubrey. Well, the video, it sounds like she's dating a high value man and he is, um, you know, holding her accountable to the things that she's said that she would do. And it is a lot of work. Um, being in a relationship or even just dating, it's a lot of work. It, it takes a lot of work. And um, I think that I, I, I definitely agree with her. Like it's, you know, you, you have no idea what you're getting into and then you're in it and it's like, oh my God, okay, yeah, I did say I was gonna do this. And, you know, he holds me accountable to doing it and growing and every day becoming a better version of myself and our relationship together. I think of the definition of a high value man has nothing to do with money. Absolutely nothing. Um, it has everything to do with his character with who he says he is, does his actions match up with his words? Um, does, you know, what he says he's gonna do, does he do it every day? I mean, is he committed? Is he driven? Is he growing? You know, you've got mentally, emotionally, physically, and then spiritually. A high value man has all of those in order and and driven and doing it just like you know a lot of guys go to the gym right and they and they work out and they eat good and they a high value man does that with work with his woman with his family with his mom with everybody his friends like he shows up and he's present in the moment and he listens and you know even when i don't think he is he all of a sudden boom shows me he is and and um you know i i, I wouldn't have it any other way i'm i've, I've dated men that have flown me to <clears throat> la just to have dinner and go shopping and you know i've dated men with money that doesn't even come close to the man that i'm dating today that that is, you know, all about heart and connection. And he lives in LA and I'm here up in Northern California. And, you know, he makes an effort every day to stay connected, to, you know, do things for me, to continue to grow and to con continue to build this relationship stronger and better than it was yesterday. All and so right. I think that that's like a huge difference between a financial thing and when a man is doing that and is he's of course going to be successful he's of course going to be abundant and track all the things abundant in his life <clears throat> all right thank you so much for sharing that aubrey and uh, yeah shout out to you you're dating uh, your high value men all right love all that right. for you yes all right well and you know another thing is all men are high value 
all men, every single man out there has the That's ability incorrect. to be this, to do this. That it's the potential inside of them that they have to tap into and find their drive, their why, their worth. It, it all comes down to believing in his self, his confidence and who he is and his family. And, you know, I, I believe that every single man out there has that inside them. And it's just, you know, it takes work to become and discipline to do it. All right, no worries. All right, thank you so much, Aubrey. Yeah. All right, so um, appreciate it. Thank you for uh, thank you for sharing. And I see Abele on the live chat. Uh, good to see you, Abele, on the live chat. Uh, I think the first time I've seen you here on the live chat. Zyrax, good to see you. RNTY1, good to see you guys. But let's get that live chat popping. All right, I know there's a lot of ninja watchers watching my show, so definitely come out the closet tonight, man. Come out. Participate in the live chat. I love to hear your feedback. All right. Come out the closet. Let's have a good show tonight. Got to say right. no Diddy after that. <laughs> no Diddy. <laughs> okay, but we'll keep it moving. All right. Appreciate you. Uh, I'll pass it to you. Oh, uh, yeah. Sahana, uh, go ahead. I'm, ready. I'm fired up. I was going to say, I did not like the video. I felt like the girl was giving like major pick me energy. But then also, I feel like the things she described is not like, it's not only happening with high value men, right? I feel like those should be standard expectations in a relationship. Um, like I would hope anyone you're dating, like holds you accountable, like encourages you to be better and like follows up on your goals. Like that's normal expectations I have like from friendships. So I think saying that these things only happen from like a high value man, I think is really funny. Um, ironic i want to see who she's been dating before because i i don't i have like my friends check in with me for my goals and you know we're like hey like did you apply to that thing you were saying like i think that should be a bare minimum um i also feel like the stereotype of what we have as a high value man i don't like that word because i think it makes us automatically think that a stereotypical high value man is better but i think the fact is a lot of women don't want to date high value men i always i felt i always felt like i was very driven i was very motivated i like love having like 10 things to do at once like when i went to college i was like i feel like one major isn't enough i'm going to do two main majors and then add a minor so i always try to date people that were exactly like me which was like the stereotypical high value man but then i found for my personality like it just wasn't compatible i didn't like it i don't I don't know. I don't like when someone like knows exactly what they want to do because I already know what I want to do. So for me, I I find the person I'm dating like I think he's amazing. I think he's perfect, but I don't know if he'd fit like the stereotype of like the high value man that a lot of people have in their heads, but it it works out better for us. So I think that it's important that a lot of these terms that we hear all the time, it makes us think that someone who has this, this, and this is automatically better. And that's who everyone should go for. And like Aubrey was saying, I think anyone can be a high value man. And I think there's different things that people excel at. So I think it's important that you find someone who's like complimentary of that. Okay, no worries. But I'll say something real quick. I know you go into each room. I'll just jump in there real quick. Yeah, is Every man can be a man of value, but there's different between a high value man and a man of value. Everybody can have provide value to it to, to somebody individually, or uh, in a couple or in a relationship. But there are some definitive terms to determine whether or not society sees you as a high value man. You know, like I said, the, the people you meet, like I said, he's valuable to you. But there are some qualifiers to okay, this person is a high value man. Uh, as as judged by society as a whole, not in your individual feelings about a person. Yeah, right, I agree. You. Okay, fair enough. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for sharing that, Sahana. I appreciate you. And so I'll pass it to Melissa. Melissa, go ahead and give your thoughts. What's your reaction to the topic uh, and the video? And then the, uh, what is your definition of a uh, high value man? Go ahead, Melissa. <clears throat> um, on the video, it just seemed like she was a little bit confused <clears throat> with what she wants. Um, but that's that's really her issue. I don't, I don't know what to, what to say. I don't know her, so I can't really make a specific judgment about the video. And um, I honestly think high value man, I believe personally, it depends on your definition. And my definition of high value man is I agree with Aubrey. Um, Aubrey. It's about like qualities, the 
character traits of a person is more so than the physical traits or the money, like if they have money and so on, or the social status and so on. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, Melissa. And then Melissa, uh, would you prefer to date a high value man? Like just a question. Well, if the high value man aligns with the qualities and characteristics that I'm looking for, then yes. Okay. Perfect. All right. Thank you so much, Melissa. Appreciate it. Um, and I see Prudy Wilson on the live chat. Good to see you. Dark Lake Revive. Good to see you on the live chat. Appreciate you guys. Let's get that live chat popping. If you're a moderator in the live chat, get everybody active and get those ninja watchers out their closet tonight and let's get participating on the live chat. I'll pass it to the fellas. Fellas, uh, thank you ladies for your feedback. I'll pass it to the fellas. I'll start with you, uh, Jerk. Same question. What's your reaction to the video? What's your What's your opening thoughts about the topic? And also, what is your definition of a high value man, Drake? Go ahead, Drake. All right. Well, just for the record, I never dated a high value man. So I just <laughs> want to put that out there. Let everybody know. But going back to the video, I, I, I think there was some truths in there. I mean, she she did kind of have the, the I'll say some of those vibes like the ladies mentioned, you know, because of where well, we got the pearlies and people like that. So I did get some of that. But what she did say held some truth to like certain, I'll say, individuals of men, whether it's high value, elite, whatever word we want to use and stuff. I, I think a lot of guys that do operate in that realm, I would say they're a little more difficult to deal with because, you know, I think they have a lot of structure. You know, they're very disciplined, you know, to kind of reach those peaks and stuff. So I think that's what she was trying to communicate. I don't think she probably did the best job, but I think she was talking about like how they operate, where it's just like, like I said, you got a lot of structure in life to achieve that stuff. So, you know, you might not be the funnest person, you know, you're, you're good at time management. So a lot of times you might be saying no to like things people might want to go do because, you know, you're not going to be taking off your, your path or your goals and stuff. So a lot of times when women do kind of get with like guys that are in uh high advanced careers and stuff and they super successful, you know, like I said, they're kind of experts at no. So, you know, it might not be as appealing once they kind of get in that lifestyle with those type of guys. And what, what was the second part of your question? Sorry. Um, what's, what's your definition? What's your definition? of? A oh, high okay. Value? So I would say a high value, man. I, I think there is a money component to it because, you know, the reality is life, life is expensive. We, we got to stop capping with that. You know, everything pretty much, we go around, what do you like to do? There's a money component involved with that it's the places you want to live. Like you want to have a family, you know, if you want to put your family in a, like a good area, you know, that's money driven, you know, good school systems and stuff. So money's definitely uh, important. And also, you know, money's an outcome of like, I say your discipline skill sets that you achieve and stuff like that. Because at the end of the day, you know, if I'm going to pay somebody a high salary, I'm just not going to throw money at like somebody who ain't developed or isn't timely and stuff like that. They, they lack focus and stuff. So, I think sometimes people look at money a little different, but it's just an outcome of, like I said, those different skill sets. Also, I do agree with the ladies with their mention, because, you know, sometimes people just stop at the money. It's like, oh, if you get all this money, then your high value is no like, do you have the characteristics, values, you know, how you treat people? I know the ladies didn't mention uh, emotional intelligence. Definitely agree with that, you know, communication. So I think all that should be embedded into the the definition versus just you know, flat with money. Oh yeah. Physical appearance. That's important too. So I think it's all those different metrics. Can I ask you uh, a question? Yes, ma'am. The like things you're saying, like it's difficult to date a high value man. I would argue it's just hard to date any man or like any woman, right? Like, I think that there's like, it's like, choose your hard. There's different things that are going to be hard about one versus the other, but I don't understand why we're framing this as just a question around like, high value men, like dating anybody is hard, like being alive, talking to like, you know, doing anything is hard. So the reason it's been framed yeah, the disagree. way it is, is because yeah, disagree. A, the high value man in society is the most sought after guy uh, uh, on paper that a lot of women are, are going after. And that's the one there's their ideal partner. So it's saying, is it difficult to date what society deems should be your ideal partner? And just uh, real quick, like I because I, I do see what you're saying as far as like, I want to say the difficulty component, but all you ladies on this panel do not struggle to get a guy <laughs> to talk to you. Very attractive female. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure y'all not struggling. Like, please, somebody come talk to me. <laughs> Maybe on the flip side for guys, it's a little rougher, but I, I, I bet y'all not struggling too bad. 
No, just to just to add on to that, you know, I do agree with Sahana. It is like life is hard, dating is hard in general, but you know, it's it it's dating the guy Joe from McDonald's and dating the CEO of of a company. It's gonna be two different. It's two different experiences, you know. So it, you know, that's that's what we're we're talking about. So it, you do agree, dating is hard, but the, if you're talking about a certain status and level, or caliber of man, uh, who has standards and values and, and principles. You know, it, it's a different experience uh, if you date two different men with those types of type of uh, what of type type of status. So, I just want to bring that real quick. And now, UK economist, I do see your uh, uh, your question in the super chat. I'll come back to you and I'll read it to the panel, and then we can respond to it. I'll pass it to you, Manic, and then come to you, Damien, and then uh, we can have an open conversation with the panel. I'll pass it to you, Manic. Manic, what's your reaction to the video? What's your thoughts on the topic? And what is your definition of high value man? So I've seen this video before, and I actually liked it. I think she did an excellent yeah. job of like pulling out an element that's not as talked about in the whole YouTube podcast space. Um, and uh, it's it's a point that uh, Aubrey kind of mentioned and brought up as far as uh, what did she say? Um, yeah, I, I mean, the video. Clip, yeah, I, I like to take a lot of notes. Uh, but not, there's just so much to break down. I, I'm just trying to struggle where to start. Um, I think at the end of the day, uh, I, I don't think dating is hard. I think that's super easy. Uh, but finding somebody that's going to meet all your metrics, yeah, that can be difficult. But if you have open communication, you know, things really aren't hard if you talk about it and, you know, be 100% or authentic, authentic as you can from the very start. It kind of protects you from you know, wasting your time and spending uh, years doing nothing. But I liked uh, what I was saying Aubrey pulled out was that she's, it looks like she's coming from a stance of not getting a high value man and then getting a high value man and then coming to this realization like, wait, this shit is harder than I anticipated. I thought it was going to be this archetype and uh, that I pictured in my mind. I wanted this so bad that this guy was going to have money. He was going to be like successful. He was going to be handsome. He was going to be in shape. And I think that she finally got that. And she realized in order for a man to be all those things that women are sought after, it takes work and it takes discipline and it takes consistency. So to the jerk's point, high value men are masters of saying no. So that can be difficult for a woman who's used to dating guys who are lower value, who will just kind of do whatever they say and like will will fall over, you know, at their beck and call. You know, the type of guys who drop rose petals on the floor for them. It feels nice, but over time, um, if a guy is so focused on you, how can he be focused on the vision that he has for himself and the vision that he has for that family? So I think you can kind of see that in the passion in which the woman's speaking that you know, she's coming to that realization like, damn, this shit is not all that is cracked up to be because this guy not only has standards and a routine for himself, but he expects me to be held accountable to that same standard and levels to some degree. And, and I don't think she was prepared for that. So all right. that's what I think about the video. As far as the definition of high value, I won't go into all the details, but I, I love how all the women um, kind of focused on the more intangible things that you don't really hear in this YouTube space. Um, so often it's focused on the money and the financial component, uh, which is important, but um, to the women on this panel, uh, they talked about emotional intelligence. Um, they talked about being in shape. They talked about attitude. They talked about relationships um, and just having like a, a almost like a positive and pleasant aura about that uh, person. And that's what makes somebody high value. So I do agree with that, but I just want to add that to the jerk's point, um, finances are a big portion of that because if somebody's dedicated and has a vision eventually, and if they stay consistent towards it, things are going to, you know, money oftentimes is an outcome of like work ethic. Um, it's not, it's not the best indicator because, you know, obviously some people are just born with silver spoons. Uh, but it, in order to cre uh, generate money and, you know, utilize the resource, <coughs> it does take a level of discipline. So, 
everything that everybody said essentially, and I'm just adding, reiterating that the finances are uh, a component of that. All right, Manic, appreciate it. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for sharing, and I pass it to you, Damien. Thank you for jumping on as a public guest. But uh, yeah, what's your reaction uh, to the video? Your thoughts on the topic, and what is your definition of a high value man? After Damien, we'll respond to the super chat, and then we can come back to them, and we get to, we get to respond to each other's uh, opening statements. But go ahead, Damien. Right. Y'all ready for this love fest to end? No, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. I'm kidding. <laughs> no, uh, uh, to first, I want to just uh, 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 address her video. I heard, heard the video with. I think that's not that's not uncommon. I think what happens is a lot of women aren't exposed to the guys that society consider high value, so they don't know what the expectation and some of the things that come along with dating somebody who is probably that focused and driven and have has a plan that they're executing and has a certain definitive expectation of the people that they date. So I'm not surprised she was caught off guard by what he might need or what he might expect from the person that he's dating. Um, and uh, it, it, it's, it's she was when she just realized it and then now she had to go and say, okay, have, do I, am I able to do the things that he might need or be where he and how he might need me to be in order to, to continue dating this person? That's something that she's going to have to decide for herself. Um, and like I said, I, like everybody said, uh, 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 all those stuff are great. Like, you know, emotional intelligence been the, the standard is always going to be, you got to be a guy who is making at least 10 grand a month, uh, for the, for five years consecutive. Uh, you got to have utility. You got to be have uh, 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 a, a network of other high value guys to where you guys are commiserating and making sure that each person is uh, 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 you, you have uh, resources to make sure each person is maintaining a certain standard. Uh, I feel like you got to provide utility. You got to be useful. You got to provide something outside of that that is unique to you in the group. Um, and, and 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 I think those things are just as important uh, when it comes to uh, being being society viewing you as a high value man. You know, um, all that other stuff is is great, and I think it's it's what contributes to long, uh, healthy relationships. But what made you what makes a man most valuable in society is those other tangible things, those intangible things makes that person valuable to the person that they're with, but not to society as a whole. Uh, and most men who, who, who are viewed by, by other men, not by themselves as a high, cause high value man, cause there are high earners out there who aren't viewed in society as high value, uh, are pretty content. They're pretty, uh, 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 happy with their place in life. And you don't find too many of those those people like uh, depressed or upset or just ill-tempered or anything like that because they, they, they've, uh, uh, they've, they've, I got a bad connection. Yeah. It's buffering. It's buffering a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. It's slowing you down. Okay. Okay. Let me see if I can switch, but I say what I need to say on that subject. I'll All switch. Right. Hold on. All right. No worries, Damien. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for sharing it. So Damien, you're a high value man, 10, uh, 10 G's a month, right? Your definition? Oh, he paused. Oh, he okay. froze up. Yeah. All right, so uh, let me read. Let me, huh? <laughs> yeah, he's like, let me get out of here. Let me <laughs> <laughs> let me read some super chats real quick. Appreciate the panel. All right. Uh, uh, thank you so much, Jerk. Uh, support the host. I hope everyone had a bad day, uh, day today. All right. Thank you so much, sophisticated Jerk. And this is a question <laughs> from the panel, uh, the UK economist. Shout out to you. All right, so he dropped the super chat question. Uh, many high value men marry women from the same social class and from similar elite schools. So are you prepared to compete for this man to show him you are a better option? Ladies, you wanna respond real quick to that question? I don't compete. Aubrey doesn't compete. It's feeling like probably none of us compete. Not because it's like compete for what? <laughs> what are we competing for? Ten dollars? Right, not the high value man. <laughs> <laughs> no, you attract him. A yeah. woman attracts a high value man by being in her feminine essence 
and being vulnerable and authentic. Um, if she's not, then she's going to attract a fake, okay. a yeah. fake high yeah. value man, like the one earlier, with all the money and no backbone. Right. Like I said earlier, it's like there's a difference between standards and value. And I feel like that's just something that, that people kind of look over. But I wouldn't say, to answer your question, that I personally feel anything about competing for a, <laughs> a high value man. I think that's that's crazy. I think for us to also feel comfortable with ourselves and who we are and to value ourselves as well, going to certain lengths to compete for someone that maybe isn't doesn't want to give you the time of day or isn't super interested in you in that moment it's like what's what's the point <laughs> okay all right melissa lisa asahana did, did you guys want to add on or respond to that question i think it's unfair to view dating as competition if you're looking for a genuine um authentic honest connection with someone that's my that's my thing Okay, and then Lisa? So convincing someone of my value. So like if we, if you see me, we go, we go on a date. And if it's not bad, then I'm not going to spend the rest of our interactions trying to convince you that I'm better than someone else. That's just like ridiculous. If you don't see it, then you don't see it. That's okay. Somebody else will. Okay. <laughs> and then Sahana? I, I kind of want to hear what the guys have to say first. I, th I think maybe compete is the wrong word, but I think if we're like being realistic, like everybody has options. And then, you know, like as women, there are certain things that men do. I wouldn't call it like a competition, but I think there are certain things men do to stand out. And I think as women, we have to do the same thing. I think it's Thank not an intentional. Huh? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no, I don't think it's intentional. Like I never date a guy. I'm like, I'm trying to like beat like all his other Tinder matches or whatever. But I think like you have to be realistic and know that like if you're not holding yourself to certain standards or like if you're constantly ghosting him for like two weeks at a time, like you're probably losing the competition. <laughs> okay, if fair enough. Thank you so much. Him, over. Sahana, drop your cash app. We, we, <laughs> <laughs> we, we putting you on a guy's payroll tonight. <laughs> I mean, it's, it, yeah. it's funny, like, like women like say that a lot. Like, oh, I don't feel like they need to compete. Oh, I, I would never compete. Or oh, you do. What happens is that's right. If you go into a bar, or you go into a party with somebody, you don't go wearing sweats and a t-shirt or the same way you look ninety percent of the time. You get to your you 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 dial yourself up to that ten percent of the time where you're looking phenomenal to go out there and to be in the public eye because you know that there's the possibility that you you want to stand out you want to put your best foot forward i don't understand and why that's a bad thing it's making it seem like we're, i think people like you said sana people have a misconception that it's like okay i'm gonna line up you it's like the bachelor where it's just Damn like you know. it's one guy sitting there handing out roses like okay you uh uh you get a rose or you get a rose i don't think it's that it's just you're competing uh, with all the other women who might be attracted to that guy at the same time. Not, Dang, not I think the directly. I think I think the issue is the word competition that they're getting hung yeah. up on because exactly. I think the word competition in of itself uh, implies a possibility of losing, and no woman wants to lose. Point. Now I know yeah. I know you're probably you're probably gonna hear it from someone else here. But mm -hmm. and I'm not gonna say this for like every every woman, right? But not every woman dresses up with that intention. You feel me? Like sometimes girls just want to get dolled up because they want to have a fun night out with their girls and take cute pictures. You feel me? Like it's not that always with that intention. Oh yeah, of, for sure. We understand of that. Acting a male. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like onto yeah. animal shit. Like <laughs> no, I don't mean you trying to catch somebody. Go ahead, Mac. I'm no, sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to say, I think uh, when I thought about the scenario in competition, I envision like uh, all the women on the panel that are single getting an invitation to uh, an event, you know, upper echelon where, you know, there's single men and these are all high value men from every definition that everybody added, including the financial component. So if you are in a room and you know there's other single men and other single women, you know, trying to match up. As soon as you get there, you're going to be looking around like, okay, which of these guys am I interested in? And, you know, you start talking to them. You know, if you see that guy that you really want, um, there's 
probably other women that really want that guy too, who just kind of stands out above the rest. So at that moment, it is a competition. Now, it, it, you can sit up here and be cute and say, oh, no, that guy's going to come to me and, and if it doesn't work. And I mean, some women do take that approach. And those are the ones that kind of get left to the side because the women who are like more forthcoming and like understand and recognize the game, you know, they kind of hone in and, you know, do what they need to do to attract that man to look their way. And uh, when we use the word competition, because like you like you guys are saying, like, man, we ain't going to be out here like elbowing people and, yeah, it's not you know, conniving. I think it's more of like an indirect competition, mm -hmm. like everybody's mentioning, where it's just like, you know, you got to. I, I like what Sahana was saying, where it's just like you got to put your yourself in a position where you're you're attractive, whether it's your personality, you know, how mm -hmm. you, you're hitting the gym, you're doing certain things. So, I mean, that's some of the competition element. And then, like Manic said, a lot of times, you know, people are kind of wait for, I guess, the the perfect thing to line up and stuff. And a lot of times life just don't happen like that. So, yeah. you know, I do think people got to like switch the mindset. Competition ain't bad. You know, guys, we know we know there's a rejection element that could possibly happen. But it's just like, hey, we know we got to put ourselves out there and do certain things and, you know, approach females if we're interested in stuff are, you know, you just like Manic said, you're going to be left on the sidelines. So. I think that's what happens a lot when people are saying that like dating is difficult. It's just because people are just, like I said, waiting for that perfect alignment, that, that story, t that fairy tale type ending or something that everybody's just going to line up perfectly and stuff. And it typically doesn't happen like that. And women, it, 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 and I think women know that there's competition, even women who say, I don't want to compete or anything like that. If you walk into just like uh, Manic was saying, you walk into a function and there's a guy you find you found attractive, but you walk into that function and he's talking to another woman, you know it's competition because it gives you, makes you upset. It bothers you because you know that, dang, there's my chance. Or, or maybe I'm missing my chance or what have you. I'm not saying you go on like, just like uh, 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 Jerk said, nobody's going to elbow and nobody and, you know, headbutt nobody. I'm just saying, you're not getting physical, but I said, but you know that that part of your brain that's thinking, damn, you know, that might be my opportunity to talk to this guy that I find interesting and I'm interested in. That's your competitive spirit uh, 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 kicking in. That as soon as that chick walks away to go to the bathroom, you see, this is my opportunity to let me go in there. <laughs> yeah, it may exactly. incentivize you to do more and go to go and start talking to him. I'm like, hey, Steve, how's it going? Blah, blah, blah. To try to try to try to <laughs> put it yourself in 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 the the the, the pole position. And that's just true. If, we're, if I'm wrong, you guys can correct me, but I don't think I'm wrong. Well, I don't think I'd put, you know, words in women's mouths. Like, you know, I mean. Hence the saying, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. Like maybe <laughs> speak from experience. And, you know, if you're a woman, then absolutely I could hear you. But I've slept with not. 200 women. I know. How, I know. How, I, I, I got an idea. I got, six, I, I got three sisters. With. <laughs> I got three sisters and I've been married for 16 years. Let me tell you something. I know a little a bit about women. It's a trigger response. And I got a daughter. It's a trigger response to he her insecurities. Okay. If she sees you talking with another woman and she gets upset, it's a trigger response to her insecurities. It has nothing to do with you or competition it's always going to be about herself when it comes down to the end of the day it's how she feels about who she is and what she does and how she believes about herself in comparison so to who <laughs> there's no comparison i'm just giving you a little insight on women because you've got this like Oh, well, you guys are competitive and da, da da da. No, it's not competitive with you or it's not competitive with other women. It's the competition within her own mind. The shit that she's battling, the demons in her head that tells her that she's not good enough, that she's not pretty enough. Like it, it just goes so much deeper that I know it's hard for you to understand, but it's so much deeper than this surface, like, 
stuff that if you If somebody said, feels like about. they're not good enough, that means they have to have a comparing themselves to something else to see that that must be the level. I'm not that it's level. It's a I mean, trigger I get response a... from the past. It's always going mean... to be a trigger response from the past. Past okay. experience, past relationship, parents that told her that she wasn't good enough. It's always going to be some type of trigger to response. What? To anything that comes up in a competitive woman's like, oh, well, I have Come. to get my tip and look better <laughs> to be competitive with whoever you say that they're competitive you're the one that said it out of your mouth you just said it out of yours that we're competitive that it is competition but it's not okay hey Abby, but, uh, i think I, you're, I you're think right you in what you're that. saying but at the end of the day what you're saying is the same thing dame is saying he's just using the word competition and you're saying that hey, she can't she's she can't have competition because it's comparative amongst what she has in her mind. But what she has in her mind is the competition from everyone else, or the competition that she didn't live up to, or the standards that were put on her from her parents, or whatever traumas that she has in her past. But all of it is related to trigger a response. It's a trigger response. Something is triggering her to respond competitive if you want to say that um irrational emotional whatever words you want to put there before that is going to be a response let's put competition there how about yeah. we do that <laughs> if you i, I agree that, with I mean, aubrey i don't think any like secure confident woman is going to see like a guy they're into talking to at, a, at the bar to a girl and as soon as a girl goes to the bathroom i can't ever imagine like being like, oh right. my God, here's my chance. Let me go talk to him. Like maybe like five years ago when I was like really insecure or, you know, like, but no confident, secure woman is really going to view other women like that as competition. Exactly. I think, I think that's like, yeah, I, I think if you, those are the type of women you're attracting, then maybe you're not really that much of a because high value. That I, think, I think is where that. women excel is to like take a step back. I remember I was dating a guy for like, like a week or two weeks and it had like kind of fizzled out. I saw him like talking to someone else, like once in a out at a party, like I just never talked to him again. And then all of a sudden, like I started getting so many texts and responses. I think like true, like high value woman, secure woman, like our biggest skill is like taking a step back. And I, I don't think competing is that way. The way I view competition is more like within yourself, right? I think to like make yourself a high value woman, that's a competition, not necessarily with other women, like a competition with life to like be successful and all those things. I like what but you I said right so there. Oh, oh, let me let me just say this. Ahead, I, I like what you said right there with the, uh, with the competition, competition about life. Life is competitive. Everything you do in life is competitive. So there is a competition element in every aspect of life. Now, you can recognize it or you may not want to recognize it, but uh, not to like take a shot or anything like that. You're 22. So it's just like your dating market is a completely different game from somebody who's in their late thirties who have kind of missed that. They're seeing their friends, close family members around their peers around the same age, married with children, you know, buying houses, you know, living prosperously. There's going to be, uh, it's not even about being insecure. It's just a reality. Some people, if there's a hundred people in the world, right? A hundred men and Let's say whatever you deem what percentage is high value. Let's say you deem only 20% of those men to be high value. There's 100 women, 80, 80 of those women. If everybody was matched up in a perfect world, 80% of those women, 80 women would not get that high value guy. So at the end of the day, when you look at it, I never said most. I just said that if it would, I just gave a scenario of 100 people, 100 men, 100 women, and you deem 20% of those men, oh, let's just do even easier. You deem 10% of those men, 10 of those men to be high value. At the end of the day, the other 90 women, if it was matched up perfectly in a perfect world, the other 90 women are not dating that high value man. Only 10 women will get that high value man. So in a sense, I don't, that, I don't, I don't, argue, like, I don't think everybody wants a high value man, like, cause you're making it seem like the other yeah, you're 90 right. point is. And everyone has a different definition. So to mm -hmm. even say that it doesn't really work because what I would consider a high value man versus the other women on the panel, we don't all agree. So mm -hmm. you can't really do that stat because it's not a concrete. Just to, just to, just to, just to, just to, just to, just to respond to, uh, to Lisa and uh, quick question to the ladies. I, I, I agree. 
uh, every woman has a different definition of what a high value man is. My question to ladies, the very definition that you gave on this podcast, do most men that you meet meet that criteria? No. So that's the difference. Yeah. That's what that's what Manic is talking about. That most appreciate men, you, Will. Most <laughs> men are not gonna be I your feel like most men are, are high value though. I like oh. I've I like every single man in my life. I love like all my guy friends, like I love my dad. Like you're twenty two. Wait till they have some time to like <laughs> fuck their lives up. Because <laughs> you're gonna see some of those guys. That's the issue, but <laughs> turn into bums. And you're gonna see some dudes prosper. But uh just listening to the ladies, I, I understand what you guys are saying because you're like, hey, if something happened, I'm gonna move on. And that that's how I would handle this situation too. But we could be human sometimes. I think sometimes we we're we think we gotta kind of respond cold. It's, for example, like if I there was a female that I liked and maybe I seen that some guy started talking to her and I missed my opportunity, I'd be like, damn, you know what? I should have talked to her a little earlier. You know, I should have, you know, just approached it instead of, you know, being frozen in, you know, like fear or something. And even like now, you know, I'm 44, you know, I talk to a lot of like our my female co-workers and stuff. And then everybody, you know, like Manic was saying, when they start kind of hitting our age group and they're not with somebody, they're like, damn, you know what? I did have the one where I could have like talked to him. I could have like gave him some attention and stuff. So that's what we're kind of saying is just like. I get it. You know, you should, like you guys said, like you do have some self esteem, so you're not going to fall apart. But if we could be honest, you know, we do have like with people in our family, aunts, uncles, that if you talk to them, they're going to be like, yeah, I didn't miss a good opportunity because I didn't do ABC, you know, whatever. And that's what we're kind of trying to get people to realize. Not saying like, yeah, like we said, you got to go do some crazy stuff and be mentally falling apart. But if you do see a, good person and you do sometimes got to seize that opportunity aka like a little bit of a competition because we we see it playing out a lot uh, uh, can i just uh, uh address something to aubrey real quick i just want to uh first of all just apologize for being vulgar and obstinate that's usually not my personality on these things if you found it such way i, I do apologize for that uh yeah, it's just the apologize. you're the you not a woman thing, so you don't understand thing is just something that I've heard in these spaces a lot. And I think it's just an unfair thing to say to a man where you're not a woman, you understand. And we, but because I do feel like we engage with women on multiple different levels for the entirety of our life. So we can understand some base things about women. I think that's fair that we probably, if you're observant enough, you can learn a couple of base things about preferences and, and expectations of most general, not every single woman, but women in, in, in general, you can come up with a good uh, uh, consensus of some of the things that women may want in partners. So like I said, I didn't mean for it to come off as vulgar and obstinate. Um, that's just not my personality. I don't know what <laughs> is going on with me today. And you do but I apologize. Tonight. I love it. You I don't have it. to apologize for being a man. You are a man. You are Mr. Fix-It. You want to fix and create and make solutions and you know, just drive the, the bus, right? You just want to drive the bus and that's what you're doing. And you have no reason to apologize at all. It just came like off undisciplined. And that's what I don't like to come off as okay. undisciplined. So then that is, yeah. And I, and I, and if that's how you feel that you are undisciplined in your words, I relate. I can go off the hook, believe me. But you guys, I just have heard so many times, you know, that, that you're, um, you know, you, you said that we um, are very competitive and, um, you know, the guy next to you said, you know, just condemned her for being 22. And I'm just trying to put a little light. In a I little didn't condemn little... her. I made an observation. Right. But it felt very condemning. Like I felt bad for her. Like somebody that has is 22 could have more life experience than somebody that's 80. Like, you know, but we're talking just, about relationship who, who and relationship dynamics. Right. But so I was just pointing you, that out. Who like, are you to judge her and her relationships? I didn't judge her. All I said was that her You're experience. You're only 22. You're yes. only a man. That's an what observation. That? That's You're actually a, a fact. But there <laughs> That's was not a judgment. That's a fact. It. That was it, judgmental. It, it was judgmental. But it's okay. I mean, I get it. No, That's, it's a fact. She's 22. And as far as relationship in, experience. Well, in the same argument, though, like, I think mm -hmm. all she's okay. saying is you're only a man the same way, right? Like, these are facts. Yes. These are observations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. As much as we don't have a problem with being a man. 
Right. No, we had a problem with the lack of experience you were trying to place on Dame because he is only a man. There's a difference. No, but I never said I didn't say that he's only a man. Watch it again. I was saying that he is putting words like we're he's saying, but you guys are competitive. And well, I do agree that. Mm -hmm. And I would have to disagree with you because when a woman is in her feminine essence and she's living her life free flowing, there is no need for competition. And and you did say that life is competitive for all of us. And I'm just I'm I'm just here to say that that's not the case for me. Like I don't have to go out there and compete to the world. That for me, it's more of like an energy. If I fall back into my energy and not trip and not be all up in my head and I, I lay mm -hmm. back and like just chill, everything comes to me. I am successful. I do attract mm -hmm. the right things. Life just flows freely and easily. And I just, mm -hmm. I just wanted to point out to you guys, it's just, it's such a big difference between men and their role and what they do and women and how we get to just be. And it's so much easier for us. And it's so much harder for men in this day and era to right. just be. You get to it's just It's harder. And it's be easy seen. because a lot of times men make the situation comfortable enough for women to be that way a lot of exactly. times. They make. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. But uh, I, I, real quick, Aubrey, what you kind of just like mentioned the stuff that you do to like separate yourself. That's what we're trying to capture, because it sounds like you do a lot of positive stuff with yourself, like you said, and that that attracts a lot of stuff. So that's what we're kind of mm -hmm. trying to capture. We're not saying like like we said, that's the competition element that we're just trying to the frame yeah. what you kind of do yourself. So that's why you are having like great results, because, you know, you do have a understanding about yourself that draws people in. So I just yeah. wanted to point that out. Well, I think like, number one is getting rid of that word competitive, but I, you men need that. You strive on that. You guys are like warriors and you got to go out there. The world and, was and, built on it. Right. So, I mean, I, I hear you and I get it. And, you know, I'm just here to support in any way that I can help. I believe that there's two different types of, um, what do they call it? High value men. And uh, there's the high value man who knows it, and there's the high value man who doesn't know it. Who do you think is more attractive to a woman? The one who knows it. Yeah, the one. The one who doesn't know it, because he's no. humble. Because he's a sucker. Because <laughs> <laughs> they can take advantage of him. Hell yeah! <laughs> Come on, fellas. Yeah, it's gonna be making it rain out there. Yeah. That's like every just like in, in transversity. The, every guy loves the hot girl who doesn't know she's hot. Yeah, that's the same but thing. I, I want to say, Aubrey, um, I, I, I'll, I'm more Aubrey, attracted to a high value man that that doesn't think he is that strives yeah. to be it, but doesn't think yeah. he's there yet. And I see Aubrey, it, I'm like Whoa. based on Aubrey, based on the things that you're saying, it's clear that you have an abundance mindset because you clearly stated like, hey, if things don't happen exactly the way that I think. I don't worry about it because, you know, through my life experience, everything has been manifested to go exactly the way it needs to go. And, yeah. you know, you're a business owner and I believe you're a successful business owner. Um, so I know you can grasp this concept when it comes to competition. If a medical esthetician, you know, shop opens directly across the street from you, I'm sure oh, you're not going to, you know. Yeah, I'm I sure you're not going like, to. The whole salon move right mm -hmm. across the street. Because they wanted to be me. They wanted to go and run their own business and be me and be successful. And you know what I said? Congratulations. Mm -hmm. Good for you. Go do it. I support you. I'm not going to hold you back. Go try to be and, me. Go try to do it. Yeah. Half of but them are closed. Yeah. I think there's and that's two the still open. And that's the thing. You can't imitate somebody, especially when you're moving in your authentic nature. And I think you are moving in your authentic. I haven't heard anything that you said that's not authentic the way you feel and it's not consistent with the way you feel. And I think we're literally saying the same thing, but we're putting the nuance of competition on it. And it may be a trigger word. Man's and that's why we're not <laughs> what's that? The main spin on it. I love yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's it's but I, I think we're ultimately saying the same thing. And yeah. that's why I view life as a competition. I view everything is a competition. And not to say that Sometimes the competition is yourself. You're trying to be better than the version that you were before. Like 
I paint in my free time. My competition is not other painters. Like I look at what I did before and the process in which I've done it. And I try to either replicate that if I had a you know, positive you talk about that finger painting bullshit that you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you, Will's you like, all right, we're going to this point. <laughs> <laughs> we want to move on. I can tell you the With the crayon painting? Okay. With the yeah. crayon paintings, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Stick figures, yeah. <laughs> catch out my hand, put that on there, and just okay. Let me, uh, I let love me just, the male let, energy. Let me, just, <laughs> let, me, uh, <laughs> let me just get in Melissa and P and Lisa real quick and Sahana because I know uh, you guys were going back and forth. But uh, uh, Melissa, anything you want to add on to the conversation that they were having? Um, I just feel like from the male perspective, they I think they will always see dating as competition. And from a female perspective, as a woman, we don't see it like that. And I don't, I personally don't see it like that. I do agree that life is in general is a competition because I, I do compete in, in the workforce. I compete in the academic world, but I, I don't personally believe that I compete in the dating world. So, yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you, Melissa. I'll pass it to you, T. I'll just give you some time. Anything you want to add on? Yeah, I mean, I definitely agree with Melissa, and I totally understand the whole, like, it is competing, but it's not competing, because I do believe, in general, like, yeah, from a woman's perspective, it's not really thought of that way. Um, but, I, you know, I do have some disagreements, like, competition is kind of like an inherent thing in this world, like, literally dates back to survival of the fittest, but... Um, at the end of the day, because we're emotionally intelligent people, because we're intelligent people in general, you know, we're not always thinking about certain situations as a competition. So, yeah, I, I mostly I mostly agree with everything that's being said there. Yeah, OK, thank you so much. See, I pass it to you, uh, Lisa. Anything you want to add on? Um, OK, I don't think the I don't think women should compete or would characterize it as competing because we kind of like are the thing that you want. So you guys want to create your lineage and have kids and get married and do that whole thing so you don't die alone in nursing homes. So with that being the case, I just think realistically, women competing is like competing to uh, be of use to someone. Like if I'm the thing that you want, that, that doesn't make sense. Like, I'm not gonna uh, parade myself around and show you all of my attributes. Well, I guess all of my little niches. It's, it, it just is. Like, I'm here. If you see value in me, then you compete for me. It's not gonna be the other way around because you need to show me that you deserve my wound. You deserve me to be your wife. You need to show me that, not me show you that because I have something that you already want. Weird. Okay, I, fair I, enough. I, I, I I'll, I'll, let, me, let me let me just pass it to Sahana and <laughs> okay. I, I got to give make sure everybody uh, get their time. Uh, Sahana, thank you so much, Lisa. Uh, Sahana, anything that you wanted to add on? No, I I feel like I got my opinion in there. I'm just curious of the guys. Like, would you guys call yourselves high value men? And like, what type of woman are you interested in dating? Like, is it a high value woman? Okay, l let me ask you, Lisa, and then I ask you a question. I, I agree with you for the most part because you women do the choosing in the in the whole what's called men choose women women choose men. It's not the other way around. Men can try to approach them and stuff like that, but if you're not choosing them, they don't get chose. That's the way it is. But what we're talking about is that 10 to 20 percent of men that have the majority of the attributes most women find desirable attractiveness they have a uh, uh, competency they're they're smart they have money they all these things that those baseline things women will compete with other women for that top 20 percent of men that's what they're willing to do that's why women are willing to be side chicks why women are willing to be uh uh, uh one of many uh women that a guy is dating and they'll take they'll take uh 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 part-time uh, attention from a, a, a really top tier guy than full-time attention from like a lower tier guy in society. That's what we're talking about. Women really will compete for the top tier. Women are competing for Drake. You know, women are competing for the high, the ones who have established themselves 
of significant value. Women are competing for those guys. That's why Future can have nine baby mamas. Because women are willing to compete for those guys who've established themselves as the, the, the cream of the crop, the top of the food chain when it comes to men. So that's what we're talking about. So they, what does a female competition look like then? Because we know what men need and what women are seeking. What does a man seek out? Like what would you what would they rank the women according to? Are you talking about general? Are you talking about a general basis or individual? Because I can tell you what I would, but like high value uh, men. What, yeah, what go, what 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 yeah go what you say. Go what you say, Dame. Yeah, like I said, it's just like it's going to be like okay, attractiveness. Who's the most attractive? You know, who's who's the who's the woman that's giving me the most peace? Who's the woman that's best in bed? Who's the woman that's that's probably going to have the smartest? Who's the woman who I can uh, uh, their insight holds value to me? Those are the things that men are probably going to gauge their their woman by. They're going to say, okay, this one's attractive, great in bed. Uh, she's smart. Her insight holds value to me. She she gives me, she's a peaceful place. Like when I come home from slaying those dragons, she's ready to rub my back. Those are the things that men are kind of, those kind of men are going to judge women. And how do they relate to, how do they relate uh, to other people in society? Like, are they an enhancement to my position that I've got or are they a detriment? They're going to look at that as well. Like, for example, if you can get a woman who does all those things, but if she has an OnlyFans, she may not add to your persona in society. She may actually detract from it. But if she's a corporate lawyer or 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 does a job where intelligence is is paramount, then she may add to your public persona. Those are the things that men will judge women on. But there's always going to be physicality in there as well. Those are women that we marry. A and point we, score. You have yeah. points, right? Did right. I, brothers, did I miss anything? Go ahead, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, let me just read this. Uh, uh, I, I, okay. Let me just read the super chat real quick. Um, sure. UK economist just dropped the super chat. Thank you so much, uh, UK economist. Uh, he dropped the super chat. Uh, interesting how competing for a great man who. Who could instantly elevate you out of poverty is not worth competing for, but competing for an average job is totally fine. Does this make sense? All right. Thank you so much, uh, UK Economist. Appreciate you guys. As always, don't forget, if you do want to share your opinions or perspectives on the Super Chat, drop it through a Super Chat and we can be able to read it and respond. Uh, Manny, go ahead. I know you're about to say something. Yeah, I was just about to uh, piggyback off of what James said. I think he encompassed a lot. Um, the only thing I would add is, uh, and you may have said it, maybe I missed it um, as I was just thinking about what I look for. But uh, I think for me, it starts first with respect. And respect kind of covers um, how a woman carries herself, for sure. Um, how she speaks, you know, not just to me, but how she you know, speaks to other people's, you know, a kind heart. And then immediately after that is attractiveness, because uh, it's that initial someone has to be uh, physically attractive for me. And that's someone who's like physically fit. And, you know, some people, you know, I, I think it's attractive when a woman, you know, works on herself, but some women are blessed with great genetics. Um, I like a more of a slender build. So, uh, or a slim build. So that's going to be something I look for. The next thing I'm looking for is reciprocity. Uh, I don't expect someone to treat me outside of how I'm willing to treat them. So reciprocity, you know, kind of hits a lot of things. And um, I'm looking for a female version, not necessarily of myself, but that I can be compatible with. I'm an intellectual. I read a lot. I need someone who's going to mentally challenge themselves, you know, and not necessarily a challenge to have an argument or debate because I don't need that shit. Uh, but to have, you know, high, you know, intellectual stimulating conversations. I, got, I actually need that um, because not only is it fun for me, but it also keeps me on my game. And it's like you're pouring into each other. And I, I'm a strong believer of iron sharpens iron. So uh, I need a very intelligent woman. Um, and obviously with that comes, you know, making money. I need a woman who's not lazy because I'm not lazy. And if I deal with a lazy woman or a woman who's too lazy, you know, there's levels to it, then it's just not going to work because she's not going to fundamentally understand me. She's not going to fundamentally understand my drive when, um, you know, putting in three hours in the gym and I already look good. Um, I, I've actually dealt with that before. 
where it was like, why are you, why are you still in there? You, you know, what are you possibly doing in there? It's just like, I'm, I'm trying to be better. Like, so I need a woman who, you know, wants to be the best version of themselves as well. And, uh, and I'm going to hold, hold that person accountable because I feel like we're working on each other together. And so when it comes to a job, when you have that level of discipline and consistency, um, money is just one of those outcomes that just happens to come with it. So the reciprocity in the household for me is, you know, a relationship where a woman's not selfish, not self-centered, and she's willing to contribute to the household to, you know, uh, move uh, the the legacy and, you know, create generational wealth because, you know, that's, that's what I'm all about. So um, if she's great at finances, then I'd be completely open to listening and hearing a, a plan that she has and incorporating into our structure and household. Um, if she's not great at finances, then I expect her to listen to my plan and incorporate in the household and follow through. So um, I'm all about getting the best outcomes. So I typically go after women who are very capable and professional. So uh, with that comes, you know, that level of reciprocity where um, they're contributing to the household. So I'm one of those 50-50 kind of guys. <laughs> you yeah, mind if I jump in real quick? Uh, so one, one thing is I, I definitely, I, I think most people, if we're being honest, there's a physical element to dating. Yeah. So I think, you, but most people, it's like when you're dating, you're going to talk to multiple people to try to, you know, find that person that has like the, I'll say values. And for me, one thing that's very important is somebody with a belief structure, you know, I'm yeah. religious. So there's got to be that component. And I think for me, that kind of lead develops some, a lot of that character. Personality is big for me because, you know, once you start getting older, you know, looks is definitely going to fade. So you want to make sure that, you know, that person kind of has similar interests as far as like, I like comedy and stuff like that. I crack jokes. So, you know, I got to have somebody that can kind of handle that type of humor and stuff. And then like what Manic and Damien said, you know, somebody that's very intelligent, that, that's very important to me. You know, my wife, she's an executive and I know some guys kind of, you know, and you, you hear online, they run from that, but you know, I do like a female that can go and get it in. Like Manic was saying that, you know, puts the household first and stuff. So I would say those are the most important, I'll say characteristics and attributes that I look for. All right. So, all right. I would, I do believe society would consider me a high value man. I make uh, oh, I all this thing. Yeah, don't, I, I think that was, yeah. right? so, Hannah, that was your question. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I do believe society would consider me a high value. I make a, a, a good amount of money. Uh, I've done it for the amount of time specific. All the cats that I hang up with are pretty much in the same uh, space as me or uh, uh, pretty close to it. And uh, uh, I feel like I'm a pretty useful guy. There's certain attributes that I have that are, that are are significant to just me in my friend group. Uh, so yeah, I would, and the type of woman I married and I've been married to successfully for 16 years, um, uh, is a woman who is super intelligent. I think my wife is vastly more intelligent than me and she has two degrees. Uh, I think she's very insightful. Her insights really help me, uh, fine tune some of the visions that I have for our future. Uh, she's very nurturing. She is an amazing mother to my children. Uh, she took the time to learn the little things that make me feel good and appreciate it. Uh, and she does them on a consistent basis. And she, uh, uh, just started working, get back, back, got into the workforce a couple of years ago, and she's already genuine, uh, generating a significant income. That's not huge, but that just shows to her ca capability of doing it, that she didn't miss yeah, a beat. She so stopped working mm -hmm. for yeah, 10 yeah. years at a nice size salary and able to jump back into it that shows her value to the world is significant. So that's the type of woman that I got. I got it. And she's fucking gorgeous. You know, that helps too. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. So do you think like high value men are going to go after and date high value women, like woman society deem is high valuable? Un unfortunately, what society deems high value is attractiveness, number one, in the way they look. Unfortunately, and I'm just saying that's unfortunate. It's like mm -hmm. they are going to date the woman who's the most aesthetically pleasing to them 
for the most part. And then those other things kind of follow because I'm not gonna front. I got lucky with all the shit that, that, that my wife is and who she is, but she's I, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have, we never would have started dating if she didn't look the way she looks. And oh and I good right. I wasn't a high value man when I met her. I was I was a very average Joe. And I think her insight and her which got, I, but I was driven to do that. Her insight made it easy where I didn't have to stress off my relationship and I could focus in on developing uh, myself into a, a, a more uh, societal view of a high value man. All right, Manic, are you high value? <laughs> uh, I, I seen one comment, uh, the gas mask put uh, uh, humor. Uh, that's a big component that I, I failed to mention uh, along with religion, like uh, I'm, uh, or spiritual, like understanding of God and under, and uh, wanting to know more and, and growing that. Um, so I just want to add those two components. As far as high value, um, according to everything that the women said, yeah, I'm definitely high value. Uh, <laughs> uh, and even what Dame said when he added the financial component, what he said, he said, you got to make at least 10 G's a month. Yeah, I fall into that category too. So, I mean, from every aspect, um, I believe I'm high value and, uh, but there's levels to high value, right? So do I think that I'm at the highest? No, I think that I'm barely scratching the surface. But um, if you talk to my friends, you know, they just see me as a super successful person. Um, but I don't quite see myself that way because I know my potential. I know what I'm capable of. And I look for opportunities to constantly grow that. Okay. All right. Thank you, Manic. And then uh, Drake. Yeah, just by definition, uh, I would say I'm high value. Balling like Jim Jones. No, I'm playing. But uh, <laughs> wife is definitely high va value. You know, like a lot of stuff Dane laid out definitely feel the same sentiments. And, you know, I got lucky myself. I like one thing I, I wanted to hone on that Dane captured was, yeah, when I first met my wife, we got married very young. So I was... I would say actually uh, probably financial wise was a little bit below average, you know, <laughs> but we grew with each other and, you know, both supported each other in careers and stuff. And we both elevated to a pretty high status and stuff. So I, I do think that is something people need to start looking for a little bit more as far as like growing with somebody, but looking for those right characteristics on both sides. And one of the reasons why we do like have our podcast, I know Will and we got the Thursday one is because we try to change guys' mindsets where they're not focused solely on just looks because that's yeah. an issue for men for the longest where, you know, they didn't typically look at the intelligence factor and the different things that the value women do bring to relationships. Yeah. So we are all guys that try to push back on those narratives. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Dirk. I uh, appreciate you guys on the live chat. You guys are doing a great job being active. I think Aubrey was about to say something. Uh, let, let me, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead I on. was thinking we should probably answer this guy's um, question. He paid 20 euros. <laughs> no, that was, uh, no, no, that was just uh, his comment. He wasn't asking a question. Yeah. It um, says right here. We, we we know that we know him and we know what he's doing. He know what he, he is his his. Oh his, his, okay. He, yeah, yeah. He's a relative. He's a he's a regular. So. Oh, okay. Because I, I just didn't want him to be confused that you know mm. women don't see a high value man as pulling them out of poverty. It, they a, a high, she wouldn't see it like that. But yeah, I just okay. wanted to yeah, okay. address that with him so he doesn't you know think that that's how women think. No, no worries. But uh, thank you so much, Aubrey. And I appreciate you, UK Economist. Uh, thank you so much. I appreciate you guys on the live chat. Get that live chat uh, popping. And I know the viewership's doing well. So I know there's a lot of Ninja Watchers out there. Uh, it's time to come out, Ninja Watchers. I know you guys are creeping right now. <laughs> Definitely come out, say something on the live chat. Don't forget to smash that like and subscribe button real quick. Um, I want to I want to move the conversation to uh, something that from the video, from the TikTok video. Um, that girl was talking about something about uh, accountability. Um, I do want to ask the ladies on the panel real quick. Uh, do you guys like, uh, do you guys love a man that is, that has a, that is accountable? That has a, that's one of his core main principles and values that he, uh, holds himself to. That he's very accountable, not only to himself, but he's also accountable to you in the relationship. Do you guys like a man with accountability? Yes or no? 
Yes. yes. It, it makes a woman feel safe when a man is accountable and responsible for okay, not correct. only his actions, but the relationship as well. Okay. So um, I do want to pass. So I think that what the, <clears throat> so a lot of you guys said that the definitions of a, of a high value man, but you know, usually when you talk about men who are very high value, men who are moving in their purpose, successful, um, good morals or values, these guys, tend to are accountable because you have to be accountable to a high degree in order to achieve the outcomes and the things that you guys just mentioned. All right. So what a lot of women find it, find it hard is if you want that type of man, if you do want a high value man, uh, based on the definition you mentioned, but you also want a man that's really extremely accountable, uh, he is going to check you. Uh, he is going to let you know when you are not moving uh, correctly, or if you are, uh, behaving incorrectly or in, inappropriately that's that's not benefiting benefiting the relationship. So I think a lot of women are finding hard that especially if they are not attracting high value men. And I think T brought it up a great uh, a point where sometimes there's a lot of women out there who are dating guys who are not good men or losers. These types of men are not the type of men that's going to check you. So they'll just conform to you or they'll just give you everything you want. And so if the men that you've been dating has always been just giving you everything you want and never been checking you. It's going to be really extremely hard for you to adjust to a man uh, to say no to you and tell you, hey, you are wrong. Oh, hey, this is wrong. This is not incorrect. You need to change this behavior. So my question to you, ladies, so um, uh, what's your thoughts on that? You know, and my question is, if you are what do you, if you do want accountable men, uh, are you accountable yourself? Do you have a is it easy for you to be accountable? Uh, when you are making mistakes and also be coachable to allow a man to coach you and to be direct with you and communicate with you when you are not moving uh, in the right way or you are uh, doing things that doesn't benefit the relationship or doing things that crosses his boundaries, crossing his boundaries or disrespectful. That are you open with the mindset for him to call, to address that? Um, and what is, your, what is your thought process and your perspective on that? Because a lot of women would say, I want a good man. I want a man with standards and values. I want a man that's accountable, but men with standards and values will hold you to that standard, will hold you to that value, right? Will hold you to the things that that's gonna benefit the relationship. And if you you can't just act, and um, I think one of the things I do see online is women want, a, w women want a high value man, a, a good man, but they want to act however they want to act. You know, they want to have an attitude, however they want to, whatever, like, they just want to do whatever they want to do. But they find themselves, if you are with men who, are, who don't have standards, they'll let you do whatever you want to do. But if you go with a man that has standards, that has values, he's going to hold you to those standards and values. And that's that's going to also going to uh, entail that he is going to address you when you're not holding, when you're not uh, living living up to the standards and the values uh, that he believes that not only for him, but for the relationship. So I'll pass it to you guys. What, what's your thoughts on that? I'll start with you, Melissa. You know, accountability is important. That's something you guys all mentioned. Uh, are you are you very accountable? And I also are you very open uh, to be uh, coached and to be addressed uh, by a man uh, when you are not uh, uh, meeting the expectations and the standards of the relationship that you guys both agreed upon. Um, I would I would love to have that. I would love to have a man to um, set me accountable. Like. I'm actually in relationships and past relationships. I'm the one that has to do that for the man. I have to set them accountable, I have to set them straight. And then obviously they get tired of it because I, I don't know, like, I guess they're not in the same level that I want them to be. But I have yet found a man that's been able to do that for me. And I'll be appreciated and I'll have an open mind. And I would like to grow with that person as well. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so you've never dated a guy that that had that quality. Okay, all right. Thank you so much, Melissa. Thank you for uh, thank you for responding. I pass it to you, T. Uh, T. You know, do you uh, you want a man that's accountable? Are you open for for that man to uh, approach you and communicate with you and address you and, and hold you accountable? Yeah, I mean, I think we all want a person who's going to be held accountable and who can hold you accountable. I think it gets down to like the way they're holding you accountable because it could sound scary for people like holding you accountable could sound like a tough conversation or communication that needs to happen. Um, and, you know, it's not everyone takes those things in a positive way. Cause a lot of the time, you know, men and women, like it's difficult to hold each other accountable for things. Um, I will say that like 
there's like it's a bit dicey sometimes because like there are men who see themselves as high value and when they find a woman that matches some of those qualities and wants to hold them accountable for you know things that they think they should be doing it's kind of like walking a fine line between holding them accountable and manipulating them into being what they think that they want and so i think there's you know somewhat of a discussion that can happen there about just what expectations versus reality versus what you want versus what she wants and whether or not that's like just the standard you're living or if you're just not dating the person that you want to be with. Okay. And then have you ever dated a man that uh, was able to address you and hold you accountable in a, in a good way, not a bad way, but in a good way? Yeah. Yeah. The current person I'm dating right now, he's super wonderful with sitting me down and being like, I think that you're just going about this the wrong way and actually having like a face to face conversation without being like, hey, you're absolutely wrong and you need to change this about yourself. Um, I think oftentimes in like frustrations um, or maybe even like there's also like men have gone through trauma too, like their response to something they're not liking in a woman, it can often be met with just like resentment and like hatred and like just really like frustrated tones. And obviously like those things, those types of conversations which end up turning into arguments are, aren't really conducive to growing individually or together. Okay, all right, fair enough. Thank you so much for sharing that uh, T. I'll pass it to you, um, Sahana. You know, the, um, accountability is an important principle in the man you guys all mentioned. And um, uh, do you, are you open to being held accountable with that type of man? And to addressing you when things don't go well. I think I think my perspective is limited because, like, as a twenty-two-year-old, I'm not really interested in hearing other twenty-two-year-old, twenty-three-year-olds' opinions. A lot of the times, I feel like because my career as a content creator is so like unconventional, and as an entrepreneur, just different than like what I was doing in school with a lot of my classmates. A lot of like that dating, like that type of accountability. Like I feel like wasn't really relevant, but then I'm definitely open to it, like in a marriage and from someone who is like more aligned in my career. If, if someone had the expertise, it's something I definitely be open to. But yeah. Okay. So you've never been uh, with uh, a man that had that did that. I've been with people that have tried to give me a lot of advice, but I'm I feel like I always had like a very clear vision, and I have like a good head on my shoulders and. Like I, whatever, like I can read articles too. Like I know statistics. So, um, I didn't really appreciate yeah. the accountability, the times that I had had it, but those were like very short term relationships. Uh, quick question. If you don't mind me asking the guys that you didn't want to listen to, were they in the same level of social economically or they were over their lower status than you? I, I mean, these were all in college. So I guess in college they were the same level, but if you're considering like financially like me as a content creator versus yeah. that like starting their first job even like in a big tech company like obviously you can't compare the salaries and one is just like a lot more lucrative than the other okay all right no worries all Can right I ask her a question real quick sahana yeah. do you feel like you were just like a little smarter than them since you are it seems like you're a go-getter like you're ambitious yeah, yeah. and stuff so it just seems like you're you're probably just smarter than them oh. and they're trying to give you advice you're like man you're dumbass yeah, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that. No, 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 absolutely. I because I see where, where you're coming from because it's you yeah, might yeah. be like just a little bit well, ahead I, of them. I think because I was like majoring in applied math and like oh, I was yeah. doing you're very well in school, enough. like most of my friends yeah. were in that. So the type of advice they were giving me was more aligned like with their own paths, like go to this graduate school, like apply to these programs. And I'm like, okay, that doesn't make sense for me when I'm mm. making you know this much money like every single month just through like one brand deal, like why would I turn that down for yeah. something that's not going to pay as well? Like for me, for my vision. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. No worries. Thank that's you. respectable. That's yeah, respectable. No, no. Yeah. yeah. Don't let no dummy. Uh, yeah. Try to give you some advice, you know, and you sitting there yeah. running labs around him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Especially if you're more accomplished than him. All right. Uh, thank you so much, Sahana. I'll pass it to you, Lisa, and then I'll come to you, Aubrey, and then I'll come to the fellas. Uh, Lisa, same thing. You know, you, you want to, uh, a man that's accountable. Are, are you uh, are you open to that man to hold you accountable? And to uh, yeah, go ahead, Lisa. <laughs> yes, I am. I actually think that's a pillar of like a healthy relationship. You guys should be able to hold each other accountable. I think that's what allows the men on the panel who are married and have 
like become more high value to get there because their women held them accountable and they were receptive to that accountability. And I think it went both ways because women use res- I don't say women use reciprocate, but reciprocation is a healthy is a good attribute to have in a healthy relationship. So yes, I personally uh, actually take a lot of value in that, and I feel like it's almost used to my detriment in the past because I'm very like. Hmm, how does that make me feel? If I'm triggered by it, then there might be some truth in there. And I think it goes a little bit too far sometimes where, like um, T said, it can be used as manipulation. Um, But yes, I value that and I expect it in return. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Uh, Lisa. I'll pass it to you, Aubrey. Aubrey, we talked about accountability. Are you you open to being held accountable with the man that, you know, the man that you respect? And he's also accountable as well. Yeah, I've been checked a few times lately. <laughs> um, for example, like he was making food and I was like, you know, if you put the lid on it, it'll like thaw faster. And and I got checked for that. He, he said, uh, you know, unsolicited advice makes me feel that you don't trust me and you think that I'm a fucking dumbass and I don't know how to cook (laughs) and I was like oh my god I'm so sorry I do offer unsolicited advice so that was a big one I have to like you know can I give you feedback would you like to hear my advice before I just offer it and I had no idea that that made him feel that I didn't trust him just a stupid little like Telling him how, you know, oh, turn here. Uh, you don't trust me that I know where I'm going and stuff like that. Oh, man, the trigger. One, though, yeah, yeah, I was going to say, it's a lot going on there. Mm. Yeah, this shit is like, toxic. It's, <laughs> no, it's, it's learning. It's growing. It's like, you know, yeah, he can no. be honest with me and tell me his triggers and I can, you know, respect that and not continue to do that and make him feel like, not trustworthy or not like that I you know just and I had no idea that it made him feel that way I had I was completely clueless that just you know mentioning to turn here go this way would make him feel that way um, hell no nah. uh, I, I, I want you to, I want I want you to tell me yeah Lisa, yeah, Lisa, go ahead. Lisa, go ahead. Lisa go ahead. I don't think he's receptive to you holding him accountable that's what it sounds like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if you if he's running into a brick wall and you're like, hey babe, you run into a brick wall, he's like, dang, why are you always telling me to do stuff? That's him not being receptive to you. I don't think yeah, you're yeah. wrong. Yeah, you're definitely not no, wrong on that one. He the thing was he wasn't going the wrong way and he was cooking dinner just fine. And my unsolicited <laughs> advice made him feel that I don't trust him. Are you and I nagging. Did that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like am oh, I just okay. Trying to be controlling or helpful. My intention was to be helpful. That's my sole intention was to be to to cook the lobster faster. You know, yeah. cover it and it'll thaw out faster. Let's fucking eat. But there's but- a way that you approach. There's a way that you approach people. There's what's called a, 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 a duty to care when you win a relationship with somebody. So there's certain ways you need to approach people. In a in a way that show you still have respect and care for the person, and like and like don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm I, well maybe I should just speak for myself, and I think there's a way that I feel society views it, and most people would view it as a way that's probably more constructive uh, to get your point across. But uh, uh, I've learned my lesson of trying to dictate other people's relationships. I learned that a long time ago. So if he can say get out my fucking face, and you can say your fucking face and it works for y'all and nobody's hitting each other rock on with your bad self because i learned a long time what i think is 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 a way of relationship go is is just the way i think the relationship should go yeah. so but like i said but I, but i'm saying but if you are feeling like you're being disrespected or d- talked down to i think you need to vocalize that and if he's feeling you're being condescending to him he needs to vocalize that before the shit jumps off yeah yeah, don't yeah. wait till like the, the, the you you throwing grits at each other to say some shit. Just have those conversations when things are sweet, so they don't blow up in your face when things are sour. Yeah. 
Oh, yeah. We don't talk to each other like that at all. It's very, like, it's very uh, loving and eye-opening. Um, okay, good. And very sweet. I don't know what, yeah, no, what, uh, did I come off like that? Because... Nah, nah, you came off. You came off like you were just yeah. being helpful. That's why I said, I was like, man, if some, if I was cooking something and you were like, hey, put the lid on the thought fashion, I'm like, oh shit, thanks. I appreciate that. And I'm going to use that shit for next time. So, right. yeah, but you said that his response but I can't, was like, I can't, I can't, I can't like cook I, though. So, yeah, <laughs> I can admit so we, that. So I'm not I good at cooking. I can cook. So, I was asking him, can you give me situations where I offer unsolicited advice that makes you feel like I don't trust you? And this is the part, you know, that, that gets a little triggering for both of us, but we work through it. And he goes, yeah, you know, um, when you off, when you told me to put the lid on the food or you told me, you know, where, oh, we're supposed to go this way and we're in my, you know, he lives in LA. I don't know which way. I just know every day we go that way and why are we going this way? And so that was another thing, like. So I wanted examples of how I was um, making him feel not trusted in our relationship. And so he was giving me these um, little examples. He didn't say anything in it, but I was asking us like, and those are his, you know, oh, okay. I wanted the feedback. I was like, you know, call me on my shit. Tell me when I'm doing this because I have, I don't know I'm doing it. Like I have no, I don't, I, yeah. my intention is not to make you feel that I don't trust you and I don't love you and I don't believe in you. I do. Mm -hmm. My intention is to help, you know, and then he, he does things too that, you know, so I just, that's the part, you know, where we get to grow and learn and I've got to ask yeah. those questions and I've got to be willing to hear the feedback. Like he was, um, we were at his house and I had this big sweatshirt on and it looked like I had no pants on underneath, you know, and he, and this triggered me and I did react to this. And I said, oh, he said, can you, can you put some uh, pants on or shorts on? So it doesn't look like you're walking around naked. My, my roommate's going to be home. And I felt controlled and I felt triggered. And I was like, what do you mean? Like I, I have boxers on, like I'm not naked. And he goes, then he, he looked at me, I got close to my face and goes, it would just make me feel more comfortable if you would put on pants, you know, before my, um, my roommate got home. And I fought him for a minute on it. And I was like, you know, okay. And finally I, I just went and changed and put pants on, but it was, you know, those kinds of little things that, can be triggering with each other. I can trigger him, he can trigger me. But at the end of the day, we just want both to be safe and feel comfortable. And so I was willing to go yep. do that to make him feel that way. Okay. I hope mm -hmm. that helps. All right. Um, thank you for sharing that, Aubrey. Uh, I just have one more question I want to ask the ladies and then uh, I'll pass it to the fellas. And I see you at the Mystery Mike uh, on the live chat. Good to see you. I haven't seen you. I haven't seen you here before on the live chat, Mystery Mike. So thank you so much for jumping on. Uh, Vato's Bulldog, good to see you on the live chat. Lord Punisher, good to see you. Appreciate you guys. Keep it popping on the live chats and uh, moderators. Let's get those. Uh, let's get this. Get those Ninja Watchers out the closet tonight. I know there's a lot of people creeping here tonight, but appreciate you guys, uh, ladies. Real quick question: I want to pass you guys uh, before I pass it to the fellas, um, ladies. Can, can you got um can any man hold you accountable or does it take a specific type or caliber type of man for the type of man that you would be able to be open to letting him hold you accountable um and I want and and uh, I want to ask you that question so um there's a I per, I'll give you one example because I don't want I want to hear generally hear your answers but I've heard this from women you know, if the guy is shorter and skinnier than me, I'm not gonna listen to a guy that's shorter and skinnier than me. <laughs> like, he's, I'm not, I'm not listening to a weak ass. All right, physically. All right, so you know, um, that's just an example. But I, I generally want to hear your thoughts. So, uh, what is the type of caliber man that you would be open to being held accountable? That he's gonna, t he's gonna hold you accountable, and you're open to it. He's like, yes, I'll listen. Yes, because he's that type of man. So I just use the height for an example. 
uh, for one example, but um, a lot of women, it would be money. There's a lot of women that are say, saying that, hey, it could be competence. You know, if you're if you're dumber than me, I'm not going to listen to a dumbass, right? That's one example. But uh, can you just describe to me like what type of man that you would be open and willing to listen to that type of man and be open to for uh, constructive criticism and feedback um, that you that you're that that's the type of man that okay I'll I'll be able to listen to him when he holds me accountable, but I'm definitely not gonna listen to that type of, that man that I'm definitely listen, I'm definitely not listening to that man to tell me that uh, how to live my life or how to run this relationship. So can you just can you describe to me the type of man that you'll be open to that that you'll be able to listen to him when he holds you accountable? I'll start with you, Lisa. First, delivery. I'm not evolved yet to where you can talk to me crazy and I'm going to be like, okay, um, not yet. Maybe maybe in a couple years. But uh, from there, once you your delivery is correct, I have to respect you. Although I am one of those people that I take a little bit of everything. So I do hear the message, even if I don't like the messenger. I may not tell you at the moment and I may not be receptive when we're face to face, but I will go back and on and be like, mm, okay, maybe they had a point. But um, yeah, very uh, has to be presented the right way. Um, I have to respect you for me to inherently even pause that moment and actually listen to you. And by respect, I mean, there's mutual respect here. Uh, you know what you're talking about. So you have to be some form of intelligent. I'm not going to have uh, uh, a hobo on the street tell me about my financial means and what I should be doing. But if he was like, hey, yo, she was on time, I'm going to think about it. I'm like, oh, let me check. Because some things you got to play it to who it is okay. um so yeah from yeah. there respect and yeah it actually has to have knowledge. is there a is there a physical does he have to have a physical presence like physical presence for you to be held accountable or can he be physically weaker than you and then I'm little so i don't it's not yeah. too many men that are smaller than me and if it was it would depend <laughs> everything else will have to hit too like he can't be yelling at me and if he said it and if he knows what yeah, he's talking about i'll respect <laughs> it but <laughs> yeah i'm little so well, yeah so if, if he was if, if he wasn't if you if he was smaller than you as far as in the physical size would you be able to be held accountable by him yeah unless you telling me how to fight yeah okay uh, can you, uh, uh, this is one thing I see online from a lot of women, uh, from the, from online space, but, uh, does he have to be more financially competent than you or make more money than you in order for you to listen to him? So say he makes uh, significantly less than you, uh, money, hmm? probably if, if he makes less than me and he's trying to tell me about money, I probably would not inherently listen to him. I may go back and think about it and be like, he made, he had a point, but if you are, if you can't, if you don't want a job better better than McDonald's, you're not gonna tell me how to update my resume. Like, it's not really something you can tell me. No, just not necessarily about the finances, but uh, <laughs> just holding you accountable in your relationship. But he's, but he works at McDonald's. Oh, he makes significantly less, but he's trying to hold you accountable in the relationship. But he's, he makes less than you. Plus, he wouldn't be my partner, so we wouldn't even be in an arena to talk about it. Oh, okay, so he has to make more. Okay, so yes. No, more. not 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 more, but not significantly less. So okay, like you know, kind of equal. Ballpark. There's like a, oh, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. There's a like a range. range. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so equal or equal or more, but not yeah. significantly less. Yeah. Okay. Should we put a dollar amount to that range? Are you in? <laughs> I would say like <laughs> probably twenty k less than what I make, and then okay. obviously more. Like if you okay. want to tell me what to do, you need to make another. Twelve hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah, she's like, look, <laughs> you better level you up. Huh? Be you better get twenty thousand more. I see your 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 <laughs> paycheck stuff. You got to pay the cost of your cost, right? Okay. All right. Uh, so for you, you know, if, um, the financial aspect is important. The physical presence is important, and the communication, the way he communicates, is important. As long as he meets those criteria, you'll be open for him to hold you accountable. Okay. Fair enough. All right. Thank you so much, Lisa. Uh, keep it moving. Pass it to you, uh, T. T, uh, can um, <clears throat> yeah, can you can uh, what what is the type of caliber man that will, you that you'll be okay with him holding accountable, and the, and also can you also describe the type of man that I'm definitely not listening to this guy to tell me what to do? Yeah, I mean, I think like 
and I don't know if this is like if I'm getting it right from Lisa, but I think really it just depends on the topic he's trying to hold me accountable for, you know, like call me mm -hmm. out for. Because I agree with her. It's like if you're not making like a whole bunch of money, but you're trying to give me financial advice, like that doesn't that doesn't really weigh out. I don't. I wouldn't say in general. I particularly care like what financial status you are. Um, because like, if you, if we're having good conversations about other topics of life, like someone who works at McDonald's could also have gone through things that maybe I don't quite understand. And they could probably have gained that knowledge and wisdom through something that they've been through, you know? So I think that for me, it doesn't like physicality financially, it doesn't necessarily matter. Like, as long as, like she said, like we have a mutual respect for each other, um, and what we're on, then it, it shouldn't really be an issue for me to take in that accountability. So, yeah, I, I don't know if I have like specific parameters for yeah. stuff like that. Like the biggest thing for me is a mutual respect um, and an open mindedness to understand where each of us are coming from. Okay. When we're holding each other accountable. Okay. I mean, uh, as far as the, the physical element, like, uh, like you can't be shorter than you, right? To, to tell you what to do. I truly... I don't even know what that has to do with anything. I'm sorry. Like, I, I don't like, I mean, um, if you're a little short, like, I don't really feel like that delegates how much wisdom you have or the things that you know. So I really can't judge someone for a certain stature and think to myself, like, oh, okay, well, you're five, three, I'm not going to listen to you. Like, I don't know. I, that just doesn't, I, maybe I don't think about shit like that, but I, I wouldn't. Oh. I mean, do you, I mean, do you have a high preference as, as far as like what do you prefer to date in a man? No, not not particularly. I don't. I mean, I've I've dated people who are shorter than me, and I've dated people who are taller than me. I've dated people who are around the same height as me. So it's like, I've never really cared too much about stuff like that personally. Okay. But so. uh, also, no, no, no worries. Does uh, does he have to be competent? Uh, uh, well, if he can just be competent in general to be intelligent, or to competent as financial competent, like. Uh, more successful than you can you be with a guy that's making significantly less like lisa like Ms. oh yeah well you know i mentioned earlier that i dated a loser and <laughs> we were together for six years when covid hit he basically like quit all of his jobs um and i was the one who was basically providing paying rent paying the bills doing all that stuff for like two to three years after that and so um i guess based on that experience it doesn't particularly matter to me um he does have to provide more in the ways like um, like I'm just an emotional person. So I feel like he didn't provide emotional stability the way that I wanted. But like the financial aspect never really bothered me about it. Wait, wait, I'm didn't, curious it, about it, her situation. It, yeah, it didn't bother you that you were paying yeah, all the bills and, 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 uh, and carrying him? It didn't bother you at all? No, honestly, like I'm, I'm a big nurturer person, so I don't mind. And I know it's like super unpopular opinion, like um i think now probably in my new relationship it's like it's like i appreciate more and i find it mm -hmm. a lot more helpful <laughs> when my partner and my boyfriend is is definitely like financially stable um oh, but okay. like when i'm getting into relationships and stuff like that like i don't often think okay like what what bracket are you in um yeah. honestly i probably should think a little bit more about that but <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah it's not really something that i like gravitate towards like i don't gravitate towards people for the that reason uh, Tia, I'm, 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 I'm really curious at what point in a relationship did you realize he was a loser or are you he's a loser now in comparison to the guy that you have now um i would say probably like towards towards like the last two years of our relationship it's kind of like the realization and there was a lot like there was layers to this relationship, guys. Like it was, it was, you, was, it was, you, it was you rocked with a loser for two years. Yeah, it was, it was like a really toxic cycle that I had found myself in, and so like it was something that was just like perpetuating over and over and over again. And also like my need to feel like Thanks. you know people can change because they'll change for like a month at a time and then revert back to who they were and all these other stuff too. So it's like, I think like my hopefulness <laughs> for people's capacity to change kind of led me to be in that cycle um and it wasn't until things started getting like super super 
like like toxic abusive that I finally like had been able to muster up the courage to leave that situation and it wasn't until I was physically separated from that situation that I was able to kind of reflect a bit more about like you know what position I had put myself in and um whether or not he was as much of a loser as I had thought or if it was just like close quarters resentment and stuff like that so uh, okay. I'll say good for you, T. Thank you. you. <laughs> is this a common thing? I want to ask you, like, is it a common story that you hear women uh, going through? I'm just wondering, I'm asking just a brief question for the ladies. Is this common that you hear? Is this is something that you hear where women are like, you know, with guys who they at some point consider a loser while they're in the relationship and kind of stick it out and then have to like, you know, uh, self-reflect after it's over, what have you, or because the, the narrative out there in some parts of, of, of society is that women just be dumping dudes left and right for anything. But this goes against what the narrative that a lot of people are putting pushing out there. Are women really sticking by losers for that long, for, for a long period of time? <laughs> I, w- I don't, I can't the long thing. I think our wisdom is like forged through fire. So like we have to go, I think every woman has dated a loser and they, didn't they stuck it out and they want to stick it out because like i mean you guys said on the panel yourselves that you guys were not your you were not an a plus man when you met your wives and we understand that so we understand that there may need to be some building so we are willing to do that but we stick it out and then it gets to a point where it's like okay this is excessive you're not trying to change you don't want to do anything you just want to stay here and we have to leave but we under women understand the mass majority of women understand that there may need to be some type of growth and we respect well, there's that a difference between a work in progress and a yeah. loser a yeah, loser don't, don't is we a trying loser. to pull us into that loser stuff lisa yeah work in progress I'm is a loser like that exactly but you have to learn that because no man is going to tell you up front i'm a loser i don't want to do anything they're going to be like yeah you know one day i want to be a ceo i have these ideas and everybody <laughs> has an idea but who's going to actually put the work in to do it and that's but, what mm-hmm. you come to find out during the relationship Daddy, Can I ask T real quick? I don't want to do hey T, so look, looking back, because it sounds like you did a lot of like self-reflecting and you analyzed the situation. Can you, if you're looking at the whole situation, do you think you missed a lot? Well, you overlooked a lot of red flags early on in the process. Or did people point out certain like flaws with him, like friends, family was like, hey, I don't think he's the one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think like, Here's, here's the big thing, right? I met this I met this dude when I was 19. You know what I mean? So I was very young okay. and I think it was very easy. That. It was very easy for me to fall into like a lot of codependency. Um, also not really having dated a lot of people before I'd gotten to college. Um, yeah, like it's it was definitely like like when you <laughs> when you fall in love with someone and you kind of see the world through rose colored glasses. Um, mm-hmm. And the issue with seeing everything through rose colored glasses is that, you know, all the red flags just look like flags, you know what I mean? So yeah. it wasn't, it was always, there were a lot of things that I kind of just like glazed over and, and didn't really think about too much. Um, and it was, and like I said, it was like just a perpetual cycle, like slowly year after year, I started to lose friends. I had cut off my family um, because I was really to a point like manipulated and like right like right, somehow he got me to ride or die for him um and it was just something that uh i thought like like i could change him so i think it was definitely um a lot of a lot of reflection during the relationship on these things like okay suddenly i had like this group of friends and support system and suddenly it's just the two of us and so i think that's that's why i have like also slightly different opinions about these relationship things to be fair like i was with him from 19 to 25 years old and so like um like getting back into the dating scene and having something that's actually comparable to what i've been through and what i've experienced has been an interesting journey in itself all right thank you so much uh thank you so much t um uh i see puff daddy on the on the live chat all right, so uh, be careful, y'all. Everybody, <laughs> be careful. All right, no diddy. Um, I'll pass it to you, Sahana. Uh, Sahana, I know you. Uh, you know you're a very competent woman, intelligent, very successful content creator. 
is it really is it hard for you to find a man that you can respect and be able to hold you accountable and and if and also what what is what is that describe that type of man that will be able to do that for you and you'll be open to it elon musk <laughs> the indian <laughs> musk <laughs> Go ahead. I don't Sorry. know. I, I I mean, I hope that. I don't know. I think I'll wait to go after. I feel like in a relationship, like early on in dating, I wouldn't want someone to hold me accountable. I hope they trust me enough to for me to do that myself. And I think it's a lot better to have like professional advisors and things. But I don't know. I think in a marriage, I definitely want someone who would be able to like challenge me. And I don't know. I'm kind of all over the place. I never thought about that. I want to give you an example. Can I give her an example, like, and on yeah. on where she is now? Like, say for example, when you were in school and you were dating somebody and you wanted to miss a class. I don't know. You probably was like I'm. If you were super studious and didn't want to, but say you just didn't want to go. You woke up early, whatever, and you just didn't. You wanted to miss a class or whatever. You if could somebody that you would say, you know what, you want to do this. You need to go to class. You need to show up, be on time, and things like that. If you want to accomplish the thing that you want to accomplish, you started this down this road, and you need to finish it. Would you be receptive to somebody with having that conversation with you, or would you be like, "I know what I'm doing. Get out of my face." <laughs> I think realistically, I'd probably whatever they said, I'd do the opposite because I'm pretty headstrong. I'd be like, <laughs> "Why do you think that you know better than me? Like, I'm doing fine in this class." So. I, I think it definitely takes uh, like a lot of humility to like accept the help. And I think that's something I could definitely improve on. So Sahana, do, is it like their, their approach when they're coming up to you? Because yeah, like one, one thing I do, cause like I, like I said, I'm in an executive role. So I, I approach like my directors a little differently cause they're in that phase now where they, they kind of like want to run their own show. So what I'll do is like, just ask some questions. And then uh, by asking them questions or something, they'll start like, you know, problem solving. Or they'll be like, yeah, I didn't think about it like that. So you think, is it just the, how they're approaching you, kind of like telling you versus like troubleshooting with you? I don't know. Like, at least for me, like those psychology tricks of like ask in a different way or don't ask them if they want to go, <laughs> like give them two options and let them pick. Like those have never worked on me. So I think just for certain personalities, I, I don't know maybe like certain approaches, like I'd be more receptive to, yeah. but like, again, I'm like 22. I think I know everything. So I'm sure in like five years, it'll be different. <laughs> okay. And I think it would be, I think like managers or times like I've had a job, I think that's been a very different, but for me, like in a relationship, I'm not sure if like, at least like right now, accountability is something that's like a top priority for me. Like encouraging fine, but if someone's like, hey, you said you were going to like do this and you haven't done it yet, I think that would probably just irritate me. All right, no worries, Hannah. Um I kind of uh, wanted to get uh, Lisa's opinion on that. Yeah, yeah. Melissa, was, was, was Melissa, have I, have, I, uh, have we gone with you, Melissa? Melissa? No. No. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. I think we, we did Lisa and then T and then Tahana and then uh, Melissa, yeah, Melissa. And then I'll come to Aubrey and then we'll come back to the fellas. And, and shout out to the live chat. Keep that live chat popping. But uh, Melissa, same thing. You know, you uh, you did mention that you've never dated a man that was able to uh, have that principle and be accountable himself and have that conversation with you. So, but yeah, but the same thing, same question. What type of man that uh, that uh, would would it take for him to be able to, what qualities that, that, that does that man have to have for you to be able to be open to be held accountable by him? Um, I guess like with his own, uh, how I see how he lives his life is a reflection of who he is. So if he's living a successful life, uh, whether like financially and all that, um, then I'll definitely be receptive to what he says to me and I'll be open-minded about it. And again, I'll appreciate it as well. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I know you have uh, multiple degrees, correct? Yes. <laughs> Or does he have to have the same amount of degrees or he, you could be with a guy that has no degrees or never went to college? Um, I'll be, yeah, I'll be uh, open to date a man like that's never been in college. But like I said, he has to have a level of success that will like um, elevate his himself. So for example, he has a successful business, but he didn't go to college. I respect that. And I'm open to that, you know, so. 
Okay. All right. Fair enough. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, okay. So as long as he uh, is competent enough to be, f and to be successful. Um, and then of course he has the character and the values that you're looking for. Okay. All right. Any physical presence? Can he uh, be weaker than you physically weaker than you? He has to be. I mean, <laughs> Uh, the whole, when you kept asking everybody, like if they were okay with the short guy, I feel awkward. I have dated men kind of similar, like my height and a little bit shorter. Uh, I would feel awkward if they tell me what to do for sure compared to a, a tall, mm -hmm. taller man. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> okay. All right. No worries. All right. Uh, thank you for sharing that, Melissa. And I pass it to Aubrey and I pass it to the fellas. And uh, yeah, Aubrey, Aubrey, same thing. You know, what kind of man, uh, I know you're already with your uh, high value man right now. Um, you know, what's your perspective as uh, the type of man that can hold you accountable? Because not any man can do it. He has to be a certain man. A man that makes me feel safe. Yeah. Absolutely. Safe and secure and cherished and Love. Love is really important okay. for a woman to be able to be vulnerable and be able to listen and take corrective criticism. Yeah. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Aubrey. Yeah. And I'll pass it to the fellas. Uh, fellas, well, you know, uh, I'm totally interested to hear your responses to what the ladies are saying. And also, what's your thoughts about can any can any man just hold their woman accountable, or does it take a, a certain caliber of man uh, for all the men right now? Because I do see there's a lot of guys on the live chat, a lot of guys online who just uh, think they have the audacity just because I'm a man, I can hold a woman accountable. I think Damon, you said it uh, in previous podcasts. A lot of guys mm -hmm. just because they think the 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 default for them, uh, I'm a man, so I can be I can tell my woman, uh, woman what to do. But when it comes to uh, something I do believe in, and when it comes to respect, it's something that is not given; it's earned. So, but yeah, what's your thoughts about that, fellas? You know, can any man just hold a woman accountable, or, or does it take a caliber of man, the things that men have to work on, in order to earn that respect from their woman to be able to be hold, to hold their woman accountable? Uh, go ahead, Damien. Any man can try, but not necessarily going to be successful at it. I think the ones that are successful at it, regardless of. Uh, of potential uh status is the ones who've shown a history of good decision making for a consecutive period of time like even if it's on small uh uh day-to-day -day things uh, as well as big uh, uh life-changing things if you see that this person uh is is uh thoughtful and they they really think about it and they consider everything and they make good strong decisions uh whatever level of society that they at I think that person has probably gained the the right of their 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 woman to make uh, uh, decisions or, or make them accountable for things he thinks may be detrimental to where they're trying to go as a couple. So, okay, all right, thank you, Damon. Damon, I pass it to you, Manic. Yeah, what's your thoughts about you know uh, can any man hold a woman accountable? Does it take a certain type of man in order to be in that position? I believe it definitely depends on what you're holding the person accountable on. Like if it's a financial conversation, obviously you should have your finances together before you start trying to give advice on finances. Um, to uh, Damien's example with uh, Sahana, um, I, I think she probably would be a little bit more receptive just based on, you know, what level of nuance it was said. Like instead of saying, oh, you should be in class because you know, you're trying to get good grades. Obviously, she, if she's getting good grades, that's an irrelevant point. So, I mean, I think most people would kind of have that natural reaction. Like, who are you to tell me? Like, I'm, I'm good. Like, I'm taking this extra time to just chill. But if he approached the situation like, hey, Sahana, we talked about this earlier, and you said that you wanted perfect attendance, and this was one of your goals. So by you staying home, you're going to miss out on this goal. And it's like, I'm not telling you you have to go. I'm not telling you you should go. But, you know, if you want to meet your goal that you set, you know, I'm just here to hold you accountable in that in that sense. And then it's not it's not saying that she's wrong or right. She can say, you know what? I did have that goal, but I changed that goal because, you know, I value my time, you know, to re recover, recoup better. And that's perfectly fine. So it's not necessarily controlling or 
holding them accountable where you have to do something. It's just saying, hey, you said this, and I just want to know if that's still consistent with what you're trying to do. So, I mean, there's there's nuance in the way you got to approach things. And it's not like necessarily a psychological or manipulative game. It's just having a conversation and knowing who you're dealing with. If I know Sahana is a very capable person and, you know, gets good grades, it's not really that big of a deal anyway. We have an argument or a debate about it. Um, but uh, what was your initial question? I just I just wanted to get that off because, uh, you know, oh, yeah, she was like, know. oh, I wouldn't be receptive to it. I was like, I think she no, would. No, no, just that the, uh, what are your thoughts about does uh, can any guy just hold a wound accountable or? Does oh, it, absolutely not. No, absolutely yeah. not. No, no, no. You you can't you can't be walking around just thinking because you were born with a penis that your opinion is more valid or that you can lead somebody. Um, because at the end of the day, uh, somebody who's already driven, they don't need that type of leadership. And you could be leading them in the opposite direction where they are going to go, or you could be holding them back from their potential. So I think if you're going to tell somebody how to do something, you should um, not necessarily be an expert in it, but you should have some level of expertise in it. Uh, and as far as unsolicited advice, Aubrey, I'm guilty of it too. Sometimes I see things and I'm like, oh, hey, it could be done better this way. And that's the beauty of relationships because you start to get to know somebody over time and as time progresses, and then you know when to chime in and you start to understand when, hey, maybe I'm not going to say anything. Maybe I'm going to let this person go down this rabbit hole and you know, find the results negative for themselves. And I'm just going to be there to guide them just, you know, so the, so the hit is not as hard. So uh, there's a level of understanding on your partner too. And Aubrey spoke about that, like, you know, having that open communication, like, where am I crossing the lines? What did I do? What did I say to make you feel um, uh, like I'm overstepping? So, no, I don't think guys can just randomly go into, step into a woman's life and start, you know, dictating or you have to do X, Y, Z. And then to answer the other point, uh, your mission to the women, like, oh, yeah, if a guy is physically, you know, at, not at the level or weaker than you. Are you going to listen to them? I think the only women who actually have a problem with that look at it from a standpoint of like, can he beat me? But if a woman, <laughs> yeah, because I mean, that's the only, that's the only way that it holds any type of value. Uh, you know, uh, and if he's yelling at her, like, but honestly, I don't really believe that. I don't really believe in yelling in relationships. Yes, it happens in certain situations when you're not able to control your emotions. But if you're an emotionally stable person, there's ways you can have conversations with people without raising your voice. Um, so in the sense of uh, women not respecting guys because you know they may be um, smaller in stature or physically weaker, I think that comes from a standpoint of like, you know, domestic abuse and like past trauma. And it's like, hey, well, you can't beat me. So you know, if you yell at me, then I can physically, so I'm not going to listen to you versus, but I mean, you got to be dealing with some ratchet, ratchet women who have that type of mindset. And quite frankly, that's not the type of women that I deal with or even would even entertain. I don't care how beautiful. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you for sharing that, Manic. I'll pass it to you, Jerk. Jerk, same thing. You know, can any man hold a woman accountable or does it take a certain caliber of man? No, I think, I, I think definitely a man has to be competent, but you you said it earlier will like you have to build a certain level of trust you know to hold somebody accountable and honestly you got to be in some form of like either a friend or a relationship because i think sometimes like even in these spaces people go overboard like they want to hold somebody that they met for like 10 minutes accountable and it, that just ain't gonna fly nobody's gonna listen to that but i, I do think like men that understand that trust has to be earned are typically the guys that I would say would have that stature and then, you know, they're welcome pushback or questioning. Cause I think a lot of times people get upset when people question, you know, uh, some of their feedback and they're, you know, trying to see where you're at because there are like, I think Manic was hitting on it a little bit where there's, you know, they say false prophets, there's people that scamming. So I tell people all the time when I try to give them advice, I'm like, look, here's the source resource or here's the site. You know, go look it up for yourself or, you know, if I'm giving financial information, I'm like, go talk to a financial person so you could kind of vet my information. So I think that's where people got to be cautious about it. It's like, is this person like point me to where they're getting the information so I can look it up myself? And I, I welcome people 
like I said, giving me pushback because I just don't want to blindly be giving people information and stuff. So I think that's where, you know, people got to be smarter with like, okay, this person is coming from a true place. You know, they're not just trying to feed me anything and stuff. And I do understand why women are becoming more cautious. Cause like Manic said, it's like, man, you'll get some dudes that will lead you off a cliff if you just blindly follow. So I tell people all the time, I'm like, nah, like if I'm telling you something, go look it up get comfortable yeah, with it, it and come back and let me know you know we can have a deeper discussion after that yeah. all right thank you so much i, I, I want to i want to just speak of something real quick uh it's very coherent in my head so it doesn't come off that way i apologize in advance uh the reason why i think we was asking about the height thing and a lot of them was like oh what does that have to do and why do things like historically women feel like if a woman is big if a man is bigger stronger they can provide an increased level of security for you. Do you women agree with that? Like, if you feel like if you're dating a guy that's five, four, 120 pounds, there's you tend to think that the level of security that he can provide for you is a lot more limited than somebody that's six, four, 220, correct? Mm -hmm. Would you I guess, agree with that statement? Yeah. And I'm not talking about, don't say he, if he had a gun or if he do karate, I don't, don't do that. I'm just like general hand to hand <laughs> protection. That guy is going to be able to provide a little bit more security. So I think what he's trying to say is if somebody is holding you accountable and you view them as a secure presence in every aspect of security, financially, physically, and stuff like that, you may be ten, there may be a likelihood that you may take what he's saying under the vein of maybe this is, goes under that realm of security that he might be providing. He may be having my best interest and it may be something for my benefit that he might be saying. It all goes along with that. He, he, he's tying that into uh, how secure the man is making you feel to where you listen to the things that he say uh, uh, with a little bit with a, with a more attentive ear. That's what he was saying. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing that, Damien. And uh, yeah, just a quick question from Manning's point, ladies: Have you ever been with a guy that you can that you could beat up? <laughs> Did you believe he could physically? That you could, you could beat up if you wanted to? <coughs> no. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> and these these women clearly are about like you know positive shit and like. On, yeah. they're not ratchet. Yeah, yeah. if you had a ratchet panel, you had some a panel full of strippers. They're all yeah. I dated a guy that I could have took. You know, it's, it's the be... shit out of my man one time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll hear some different stories, but I, these well, are I've all intelligent. Choke women. somebody out before. Uh oh. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> Put them night night real quick. Night night. Okay. <laughs> night night. You tried, tried to choke out. your man out. Was it in my, self defense? Yes, my ex husband. Okay. Oh, okay, that's different. That's different. Yeah, I thought you was like, different. <laughs> like, what what you doing coming in at one thirty? You know, that's different. <laughs> no. yeah, yeah. It was self defense. Um, okay, was, oh, okay. That, makes sense. that makes sense. Yeah, that yeah. makes sense. And that's a, that's was, a lot of emotions. And you, how long yeah. how long were y'all together before uh, that incident happened? We were married seventeen years. Wow. Yeah, so there's and a lot of pent up emotions, and not to say that it's any year. any better, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. good for you. All right, yeah, good for you. Good for you, and uh, getting rid of uh, you know, I, I'm not a, I'm not a fan of any type of domestic uh, well, violence. He's, he's getting the help he needs, and I good. wish him the best yeah. always. Yeah, All right, no worries. Thank That's you so big much. of you. But um, definitely learn Krav Maga. <laughs> oh, <laughs> That's, uh, if you know, you know. Or jujitsu. Yep, yep. <laughs> um, I just have one more uh, topic I want to discuss before we uh, conclude the, the podcast. And it's, uh, sweet, sweet baby, I see you in the live chat. Uh, in the background, I'm about to add you in. Uh, sweet, sweet. Uh, oh, she just disappeared. Okay. Um, oh no, I see. I see you, sweet, sweet baby. I see you. In the, I see you in the back. So I'm about to add you in. Just give, just give me a second, and just be patient. Um, I want to ask a question to the ladies, just two questions. Uh, ladies, in a relationship, uh, do you guys prefer to be in your feminine in your, when you are in a relationship with the, uh, when, you're, when you are in a relationship? Do you like being in your feminine when you're with, uh, when, we, when are you with your man? Absolutely. Yes, Aubrey, yes. Melissa, yes. Yes. Yes, Sahana, yes. Okay. Um, do you guys like a man that can fully provide for you financially, that he can just take that, um, this is a man that wants to do it, that he just, 
even though you guys all have the ability to work and you guys have your own careers, but uh, he, this is a man that doesn't depend on you financially. He can just do it himself. Of course, yes. Yeah. Okay, yes. See, yeah. Sahana, okay, and then Aubrey, okay. Uh, oh, there we go. Okay, Lisa. And um, yeah, same thing, Lisa. Lisa, do you uh, do you like being in your feminine in a relationship? Definitely. Yeah, and do you prefer a man uh, depending depending on you financially, or do you like a man that's uh, 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 old school? I, I want to provide and protect my woman and pay for her financially. I would definitely prefer that. Okay. I'm All right. Good. All right. So, no, uh, we were talking about high value men, and I, and uh, I know a lot of you guys had different definitions. And I know a lot of you guys said that uh, it's not it's not really about the outcome. It's not really about the money. It's just more his morals and his values. Um, as long as he has good character, as long as he has good values, that's all I need. I don't really need him to be a uh, to be competent financially. I don't really need him to make a lot of money. And um, that's the question I want to ask you guys because I do I do disagree. I think. If you are, I think it's, it's the nature of women to seek out um, men who can provide uh, safety. I think Aubrey said something uh, to that. Like for women, you are seeking security and safety in a man. And that's part of uh, your feminine nature. But the, that man has to provide that space. And usually it's the, the way he provides and protects you. And I know today we live in a modern society where a lot of women can make a lot of money. You guys can... Uh, uh, make your own bag and make your own money. And a lot of times what happens is um, you you would align with men who has the morals or maybe he has good character, maybe he has good values, but he's not necessarily a very ambitious uh, go-getter type of man that he wants to go out there and provide and protect for you. So what a lot of women find themselves is they align themselves with a man that, you know, he, is a, he has good character and he has, he, doesn't, he has good morals, but he's not the provider protector type. So you would end up because you can make your own money. Either he depends on you, or you, like the T's example, you would provide for him financially. But over over time, uh, it doesn't work out because it is your feminine nature to, to look for a man that can provide or protect you and give you that safety. So I've heard a lot of women said that a, a high value man doesn't 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 necessarily mean that he makes money, which I disagree. I think part of a high value man that's also one of the outcomes. And the things that he has, he has to do uh, to be considered a high value man. I do agree, morals and values is important, but he has to be a provider protector, and he has to be able to produce financially. That is very that is is a important component in that in that man. So I want to push it back to you guys. I know I don't know I forgot I, I forgot who said it, but somebody on this panel said, um, in my high value definition, he doesn't have to make money. It does is irrelevant. He doesn't need to make money or money doesn't matter. And I think a lot of women have that mentality when money, because we live in a society today, we can, you can make your own money and you find yourselves in, in situations where you don't really put that expectation on him because you can make that bag. But you've already find out long-term is when you are with a man that doesn't want to provide, that doesn't want to protect you, you find yourself unsafe and you find yourself not in your feminine, you're more in your masculine role because you're the primary uh, financial uh, breadwinner and a lot of times you don't, and those relationships tend to not work out. So I pass it to the panel, to the ladies. What's your response to that? Um, in your definition of high value man, uh, is, is good moral character enough? Is that all you need from a man? As long as he has good morals, as long as he's good to me, treats me well, but he has no ambition to go out there and work on themselves to financially provide for your financially provide for you and your family he's going to be more that man that's going to depend on you so um that's a conversation i i, I do want to have to close off the, the, the podcast so uh in your definition of high value man is is money uh important uh he, he does need to be a pro financial provider protector for me uh in order for him to be a high value man for the relationship to work or could could you be with a good man morally but uh he just he's going to depend on you and you can take care of him and would that work out long term? Um, I'll start with you, um, Sahana. What do you think? Do you think a high value man does it, does he have to be able to be a competent financial provider protector, and with the morals I mean, and values that you that you guys claim, or he he doesn't have to be a financial a competent financial provider protector? 
Yeah, I mean, for me, um, like the morals and values, that's the bare minimum. And then for what I expect in like a long term partner and a husband, I think the financials are definitely important. I mean, for one, like we talked about, I feel like it's an outcome of if you know, you walk, if you talk to talk you and you walk the walk, then your bank account should prove that if you're, you know, like, financially responsible, I, I don't think like, money is super difficult to come by. So I think being financially secure and being able to provide for me is a requirement in a relationship. And I think it avoids a lot of arguments, you know, like the majority of divorces are through finances. And you never want that to be like a constant point of tension when it's so avoidable if you choose someone who's like financially aligned, like, there's a lot of girls who'd be very happy on like different types of income. So I think it's important that you consider that, like, what is the lifestyle I want to live? What are the areas I can compromise? And yeah. Okay. So for you, it's a requirement. Yeah. He has to be a good financial provider protector. Okay. All right. No worries. All right. Thank you so much, Sahana. Uh, pass it to you, uh, T. Uh, T, does the, the high value man, you know, I know you didn't really have a definition for it, but, you know, for the sake of a, a good man, does uh, is finances important or are you willing to take care of it? Well, I think we all saw what happened last time I <laughs> yeah, decided to take care of. Him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I think at this point in my life now, for sure, it is it is of importance. It is not the most important thing for me at all. Um, but yeah, like I think like like it's not just about the financial aspect of it, too. It's like what you did to get to that point, what that says about you, your consistency, your work ethic, things like that. Um, so I think to me, those things, those things matter more, but it does like, like the dude, like the guys were saying earlier in the podcast, it does kind of, I guess, like have a crossover, like those values have a crossover financially too. Okay. So, all right. So it is important. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you so much. T, uh, pass it to you, Melissa. All right. So Melissa, uh, for a high value man in your definition, that does it. He does have to be, it has to be a financial provider protector component in him. He can't just have the morals and values and doesn't want to provide for you financially. What do you think, Melissa? Um, that's a very good question because I never really thought about that because um, growing up, because um, I come from a Hispanic community and growing yeah. up, I was told marry a provider, marry a provider. And like, that's always been my focus. But I noticed that times are changing and I've seen women be the breadwinner, but the man does pull the weight in the relationship. Like they actually do cooking and take care of the children. So if it, the role goes reverse like that, I guess I wouldn't mind because we're both, um, you know, working on the relationship like we're giving um a fair share whether it's one is a breadwinner the other ones is taking care of the household and vice versa if i get married and he decides that um that he'll be the breadwinner that he wants to be the provider then i'll be willing to do that as well so all right thank you so much melissa before i, I move on just a quick question the the examples of couples that are the roles are reversed with the woman is the primary provider, a breadwinner, and the man stays at home and cooks and cleans and takes care of the children. Uh, do you know any examples of those in your life personally? Uh, not personally, uh, but I've seen it like, um, as I, like I watch documentaries about it and yeah. I, I've seen some couples do it and I think it's achievable and it's not yeah. like popular, but I think times are changing. Maybe one day it's going to be like 50, 50, like where people, um, men are in the house and women are the breadwinner, but I don't know. Like, I don't know. Okay. No, I, I just recommend you look into it. But if you look at those examples that that's unconventional, uh, even though those relationships do exist, and I agree, it do exist in these modern times. But if you look at it, if you look at it, not only uh, anecdotally, but if you look at statistically, those relationships tend to uh, fail at a high rate because it, it, we grow against our very nature of what we find uh, mm -hmm. uh, attractive in, in a man or woman. But uh, thank you so much, Melissa. Just something you got to think about. But uh, pass it to you, uh, Lisa. Same thing. Uh, a high value man can you just have the morals and character, and without the, with the without, uh, without his ability to provide or protect? Or does he have to have the moral character and also be able to provide and protect you financially? He has to have both. Um, I've done the provider thing. Was not a fan uh, at all. That's why it didn't work. Uh, and I've done the where he provided, and I like that a lot more. It's a lot less stressful. Uh, I have seen actual uh, relationships where uh, marriages. Uh, my sister, for one, she has uh, her and her husband been married like 15 years. 
and half of it, she, he was the provider, and now she's the provider, and it's working for them. I'm not a fan of it, but it's worked for them. So, no, oh, is it other other both providers or one's totally not providing and the other's providing? Yep, they completely switched roles. They started off with him being the provider, and then uh, they flipped, and now she's the sole provider. And was there like a was there supposed to be making that bank? Was there a legitimate reason why they switched? Like maybe he got injured or nope. something? Nope. Literally was just like, I don't want to do it no more. And she was like, so we're going to starve or I'm going to have to go to work. And that's what happened. What did your sister do? Uh, she actually runs her own maid service. Okay. So she's probably, it's probably successful in to know. where. I mean, she got yeah, yeah, yeah. a family for in California. So yeah, I just, yeah, I just, I just want to clarify. Her husband said, I don't want to do it no more. Yeah. And was she lying. was like, okay, I'll go work. I'll go do all the work and make all the money for the house. And, she and you had said no they're working experience. out? She literally had no job experience. And uh, they're working out enough. I mean, they not, they not, nobody's off a divorce yet. Like I said, in two years. <laughs> they own like four <laughs> of them doing this, so. Wow. Yeah. Okay. But I'm sure, I'm sure with the I maid service, the she's, She's making more money than he was making with her maid service. Oh, yeah. I, don't know, I never knew how much, but possibly. Okay. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. All right. Thank you. So that's much. the only way that that works. Appreciate it, Lisa. Uh, and I'll pass it to Aubrey. And I'll come to you, Sweet Sweet Baby. And I'll, and I'll come to the fellas and, and we'll conclude. Uh, Aubrey, same thing. You know, does, is character and morals enough uh, for a man? Or uh, he does have to have some kind of financial competence to be able to fin financially provide or protect. Well, I think when a man is in aligned with you know his higher self and his goals and being driven success and financial abundance is inevitable and when a high value man is in love with a woman he all he's going to want to do is make more money to just buy her more things and do more things with her and make her happy i think that that's just inevitable okay all right no worries uh, thank you so much, Aubrey. I do agree. You know, I think it's a byproduct of a man with uh, strong mm -hmm. values and standards and principles that he is competent financially. All right. Uh, and then I pass it to you, uh, sweet, sweet baby. Thank you so much. I know the uh, first time here on the on on the show as a virtual guest. Thank you for jumping on as a guest. Mm -hmm. I appreciate you. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, the question I was asking the ladies: We're talking about high value man. I know everybody had a definition of high value man. And a lot, a lot of the women saying is, uh, it's just more based on his morals and characters. He doesn't really need to provide financially. Uh, is that enough? Is just being a good man enough, or does he have to be able to provide for you financially to be considered uh, a high value man or the type of man that you will look up to uh, as a woman? Definitely, definitely. I feel like um, it should be in a man's natural, um, like scientific. It's like scientific DNA for me to for yeah. a man to want to take care of and provide um even when a man like like because i have like other previous like other women have said in the chat i have previously been in a relationship where uh, i was like taking care of the, the man or i was the sole provider and, or he was living with me and even just him living with me it doesn't work out because i'm emotional and he's emotional and i feel like a man's ego is not even really set up for it, a situation to be like, even if they agree with it, they're kind of going to still resent you. Yeah. So that's what's, that's what's happened to me in the past. It's like, you know, I haven't even made a lot of money, but they've still resented me for taking care of them, even though they wanted me to take care of them. So it was, it was kind of an emotional abuse and it was kind of like an emotional deep psychological thing that they had to deal with themselves with. And I just had to get out of their way because, you know, you should, any person should want to be able to take care of themselves and, and to strive, man or woman. But as a man, um, you should want to be able to be the leader because that's what you naturally by birth are. Mm -hmm. That's just my opinion. No, I appreciate that. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for jumping on as a guest. I appreciate you. Um, sweet, sweet. Am I saying that correctly? Is it sweet, sweet, baby? <laughs> no, it's Susu. Sorry. Oh, <laughs> yeah, like, okay. Susu, baby. 
Everybody says that, so I'm just used to it. All right, Susu. Okay, Susu, baby. Thank you so much. All right. Um, I'll pass it to the fellas, uh, get your take, and then uh, we'll conclude the pod. Uh, fellas, same thing. It's just being, uh, just it's just having morals and being a good uh, good character. Is, is that enough to be considered a high-value man? Or because there's a lot of guys that are just saying, oh, well, uh, I'll just, that's all I need because I can just, the, the women are working right now. They're making money. So I can just depend on the on the woman. I can just can provide the emotional element and just be a, a good partner. I don't really need to provide or protect anymore because we live in different times. So what do you, what do you think about that, fellas? I saw with you, Damien. Yeah, I'm going to go try to pay the, uh, my mortgage with my good communication skills and see how that works out for me. I, I, <laughs> I'll let you know how that goes. No, absolutely not. You need to have, uh, there's a significant financial uh, component to being a high value man. Like I said, there's, there's a difference between the desire and the ability. Yeah, you, you, you know, I come from California. I don't live in California now, but I know that it's a lot more difficult to, to, to be a, a sole provider in a state like California that's so expensive. Uh, but to, there needs to always be the desire to do so. You need to always be thinking if your woman is making more money, you need to be thinking, OK, how do I uh, uh, equal her or make more money? That's the way it is, you know, just to feel competent in yourself. I, I, I can't understand a man just sitting back and saying, OK, cool. All right, you make all the money. I'm just going to sit back and like, you know, take care of the kids and clean the house and all that kind of stuff like that. That's such a foreign concept to me. I can't even see how that would realistically work you know uh it, it's what are you there for you know you know what is your you, you have certain things that are kind of uh inside of us that we have to do just like uh, susu baby said that we need to, the things that make us feel validated as men as adults as is our ability to be uh, uh competent and and ability to provide and, and protect and things like that and part of protecting is trying to get your family you you know your financial security is is in uh is in check as well i just don't understand a guy who fall backs on his role um to me that's not a masculine guy that's not a leader that's not nobody that's somebody i think women should be uh in line to fall fall behind and follow their lead i just don't i just don't see it as that like i said if you have the desire but not the ability if you say okay if it if your woman make more than you motivates you to to step your fucking game up, that's different. But if you really are just falling back in the role of, you know, you know, shout out to boss bitches, wife and niggas, you know, if you really <laughs> fall back into that role, I, I got no sympathy for you whatsoever. All right. Thank you so much, Damien. And pass it to you, Manic. Manic, same thing. Uh, it's just being a good man enough because there's some guys out there because we live in a, in a time where women are making money and guys can and depend on a woman but uh, there's a lot of guys thinking that i just need to be just good morals good character i don't really need to be a provider protector is that enough for a man to be considered a high value man or type of man that women will want i mean i think we kind of addressed it on the panel earlier uh, everybody has a slightly different version of what high value means to them so um and my definition of high value absolutely not you can't just you know have a good heart and a good spirit and think that you're high value. Now you can find somebody that you can, you know, get with, and maybe they're the person that's providing uh, the finances and it can work out and be a beautiful union. Um, but I wouldn't call that guy high value. I would just say that, you know, that woman found somebody who works based on her situation. So I would find it hard for that woman to actually rest in her femininity, you know, with a situation like that. Um, but I also agree or I don't agree that men can come there just with solely with money and think that they're high value because yeah, you know, when you deal with relationship dynamics, there's communication, there's there's so many different elements to not only make your partner uh, feel good, but also feel heard and make sure that their vision is encompassed, too. And a lot of times we talk about leadership, but we don't really touch on fellowship and uh, or fellowship and um it's uh, just being in a leadership capacity for work. I understand that everybody that I'm leading, you know, they have different incentives. You have to incentivize people differently. And that's, you know, in a relationship, it's no different. You know, whatever partner you're dealing with, they're going to need different things from your last partner. And it's your job to 
communicate that and make sure that whatever vision, you know, as a leader that you have encompasses, you know, your partner's vision as well. Um, and obviously it, it adjusts because life is dynamic. It's constantly changing. Um, but looking at high value, I really look at um, different elements, uh, spirituality, um, and the jerk I mentioned this earlier, like that is number one. Um, I was going to like number two and whatnot. Uh, but yeah, your spirituality, your mentality, being emotionally uh, intelligent, understanding how to effectively communicate um, your physical, you definitely need to be making sure that, you know, you're not getting fat and sloppy. Um, you're taking care of yourself and not just that you got to have great hygiene as well. You can't be walking around with stank breath or not showering. Uh, it's just un it's just unattractive, uh, and that goes for men and women. Um, so uh, another component is your your social capabilities, your communication, um, and this is the area that you know I don't think people talk about enough. But how society perceives you um, actually matters because when you walk into a room. And I, I believe the women can attest to this or agree to this. Um, when your man walks into a room and the room stops because of the work that he's put in and everybody respects and recognizes that, that shit hits different. She's like, I'm with the boss. So uh, women absolutely love that. And when you're in a professional environment, it really hits hard. Um, so that social element is important. And lastly, and it's, not really last, uh, finances. Uh, at the end of the day, like Dame said, you can't pay your mortgage or mortgages with your kind heart. Um, and if you're really dedicated and disciplined and you have a solid vision and you've been working towards it, then finances are just the outcome of that work. Um, I do say there is an asterisk with the finance category because obviously you can't compare, you know, uh, someone in their 20s to someone in their 40s when it comes to finances. So I wouldn't necessarily put a hard figure on the financial component, but uh, your finances should be relative to, you know, your age and your peers um, to be in the high value. Like uh, a young man in his early 20s um, making, you know, six figures, definitely high value versus, you know, someone in their like 60s who's making six figures. That may be, that may not be a, a high value figure for somebody. Um, um, I've been making six figures since my twenties, uh, and I'm in my thirties now. I like to throw that flex out there, but, uh, I didn't necessarily think that, you know, when I first hit it, it was, it was such a goal for me. I was like, man, if I hit six figures, you know, this is it. But after you hit that, it's like, you don't stop and say, yeah, it's cool. No, you want more. Cause you're like, okay, I did that. And I did that quickly. Let me get to the next goal. And, you know, it's just like a bank account and your savings, like you hit certain thresholds. Like, yeah, I used to be broke back, you know, when I was in college, I didn't have money uh, and I didn't have any problem with women. But I mean, I think that the standards were a little different too, because everybody's in college, everybody's broke. Okay. All right, Manic. Appreciate it. And uh, yes, speak your flex, man. Um, <laughs> Always. Say with your guest. All right. Uh I'll pass it to Jerk Stay and then, there, so. then we'll conclude. Jerk, yeah. I can um, can imagine is, is this good character enough uh for a man that all that he has to have be able to financially provide for his woman. Nah, character is not enough. Like Dame said, yeah. Good luck trying to, you know, pay bills with character and all that other stuff, you know, you got to have money. And like like we mentioned before, it's just you know, it, it's definitely important because like if you just care about your family, you know, that living in a certain house neighborhood, you know, gives you access to different school districts. We know how important that is and stuff like that. It also provides like a level of safety for your family. So, yeah, m money's definitely critical. But one thing I would say is like being a provider, I think that's where things get tricky a lot of times because, you know, like we said, there's the financial component of being a provider. But if you're a good leader, you could provide like knowledge, you know, you could provide expertise and stuff. So I think a lot of people sometimes, uh, you know, a lot of guys and I, I seen Vado in the chat, they don't understand like when uh, 
you know, you have a certain mindset and you align with, say, like me and my wife are both high earners. You know, we both come from like a spiritual background where we put the house first. So, you know, we both pour that into there where our finances look a little different from everybody else. And since I was always able to like go out there, seek knowledge and bring that back to the household, whether finances, investing and stuff, you know, I didn't have to sit there and, you know, kind of pay for everything and stuff. So I think, you know, guys got to know, like, there's different things to provide. You might have to provide, you know, support, you know, if you got to, like the ladies on this panel, a lot of them are out here executing at a high level. So, you know, you might have to align with them a little differently. So I think sometimes guys think that it's like a one size fits all. It's like, no, you got to, you know, know what you want in life, but also understand the female that you're with. And that's how you guys kind of, you know, like Dane was saying, you kind of clue them into your vision and you pull them in and stuff. So I think guys miss that component of it. So provision isn't just money, even though it's important. It's the knowledge and the expertise that you should always be trying to gain for your household to move it forward. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, Jerk. Uh, but yeah, I'll pass to uh, ladies. Any responses? Uh, any Any of you guys want to respond to the fellas? I'd like to yeah. know what Lisa's chair had to say about it. <laughs> yeah. You want a couple minutes with it? <laughs> <My bad. laughs> All right, no worries. Uh, thank you, ladies. Now, the only reason why I brought that up because one of the things I observed is um, because we live in a time we live in a time where women can make money and you guys can go out there and be independent. A lot of times, because you guys make money, you don't prioritize the importance of a man providing his financial ability to the relationship because you can make money. So because you can make money, you don't really look for him to make money. So all you look for him is the emotional element, just have a partner. But the thing is the financial component from the man is, is important for the long, for the long, for the relationship to last long term. Because at the end of the day, when you start having children, it is your nature to look for a masculine man. So a lot of times, when you align yourself with a man long term, it's not going to work out well because at the end of the day, no grown, no woman wants to take care of a grown ass man. That's just that's just facts. So it may be good in the beginning because you guys keep trying to get to know each other. You guys going through the honeymoon phase, but long term with kids, children, all the things that comes with the relationship, you don't want to carry that burden of having a relationship and still providing for him as well. And that's why for uh, that's why for uh, that's why I brought it up because a lot of times when women are making their own money, they don't prioritize that in their relationship because you can do it for yourself and you have the independent boss mentality. But then you find out long term is, I don't want to take care of a grown ass man for long periods of time. And you find you and you often find yourself losing attraction and the relationship falling apart. So uh, that because I've, I've heard it from a lot of women who, uh, who make their own money or from a lot of modern women, when you ask them to when you ask them the, the financial component, I think some of you guys did mention it on the podcast. A lot of times I, I don't need him to make money. I just want him to be emotional. I just want him to communicate. I just want him to be there. But uh, when you have, when you go into a relationship and the bills start to add up, you start having children, you guys start pay, paying for things, then you're going to start looking for that man mm -hmm. to step up. But if you chose a man that was, that didn't have those qualities, then that man is not going to step up because he wasn't, he didn't even play that role. To, to begin with in the starting of the relationship so um but thank you fellas uh thank you ladies uh for the pod shout out to everybody on the live chat uh thank you so much appreciate you guys uh but we have come to the end right. you guys uh thank you so much for everybody i appreciate ladies uh for your different perspectives and opinions you guys brought tonight uh, you know, we, we we agreed on some things, we disagreed on some things, but we had some good uh, pushback and back and forth. I appreciate you guys. But what's your final thoughts from tonight's conversation? Uh, start with the ladies. Are there any takeaways, any things you guys learned from this or maybe to, to change your perspective a little bit? Uh, what's your final takeaways? And also, how can people find you uh, to support you on your social media platforms? Or maybe there's a high value man, man out there watching this and he's going to slide. Uh, <laughs> He wants to trick here. Yeah. <laughs> what's, what's your final thought? Last nice conversation about uh, high value men and how can how can they find you? Go ahead, Melissa. I just want to say it's it's really refreshing to have a conversation like this where 
like we can discuss the role as a woman of more than just like being a homemaker, more than just being like a traditional wife, more than just being a mother. So I know we all had our disagreements, but I think it comes from or stems from the fact that like all the men here really do see women as equals and like appreciate us more for just more than just like traditional roles. So I think it was like a very great modern perspective on this issue. So I really enjoyed that. And then yeah, as for where to find me, um, my socials are just my perfect family. If you like hair and beauty stuff, feel free to follow. If you're a high value man, please do not follow. <laughs> I, love, I, love my I don't need more men. <laughs> All right, Dora, thank you so much, Sahana. I uh, appreciate you. Thank you for jumping on and appreciate that. I pass it to you. Uh, T, final thoughts, takeaways, and how can they find you, T? Yeah, I agree with Sahana. I really appreciate like the open mindedness and the re reciprocity we're all getting from each other to have like a cool, open discussion about things like this. Like, I'm sure we've all seen podcasts where people are like being crazy to each other for their their differing opinions. Um, and so, I really appreciate that you've been able to kind of curate this group of people who are able to listen to one another and talk about their different opinions about things. Um, how to, what was it? How to find me? Okay, yeah. My yeah. handle is uh -huh. there and my name. It's at TCAT. Um, you can find me on Instagram. You can kind of find me on TikTok. I don't really post on there too much, but mostly Instagram is, is what I'm on. All right. All right. Thank you so much, uh, T. Thank you so much. I pass it to you, my, uh, Melissa. Final thoughts, takeaways. How can they find you? Uh, well, first of all, it was it was fun doing this um, panel with you guys. I liked the different perspective in ge in general about dating. Um, it did um, kept me um, see different views uh, as well. So that was really interesting. And my handle is is on my display name, and I usually use TikTok a lot. So you can find me best on on TikTok. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Melissa. Just one thing I, I would say, Melissa, I know you talked about, uh, you know, certain relationship dynamics with the man can stay at home and take care of the kids and cook and clean. But I also remember you mentioned that in the beginning that you want to, you wanted a man to hold you accountable. And I promise you this, the guy that's wearing the apron and cooking and cleaning, he's not going to hold you accountable. I promise you. Okay. <laughs> Good to know, I guess. <laughs> There is no scenario where a guy with the apron cooking cookies, like, hey, I'm going to hold you accountable while I'm holding this cookie in, in this apron. <laughs> it's never, it is never going to happen. You need a, a grown ass man. You need a yeah, man. Facts, facts will. Coming in from working after <laughs> eight hours, he's going to be like, you, 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 seriously, you're going to look at him crazy. Yeah. <laughs> the time you top, time you walk in the house, Melissa, and he's like, hey, I tried out a new recipe. I use some different butter for these cookies. You'll be like, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> all right thank you so much melissa um i pass it to you um uh aubrey final thoughts and uh, how can they find you aubrey and thank you so much for being on uh on the pod tonight yeah thank you for having me will i really appreciate you asking me and this has been quite an amazing little experience and um i'm on tiktok and instagram and it's aubrey love your skin day spawn um yeah let me know if you ever want me to come back oh always always you definitely got to come back aubrey you're it's always a welcome. pleasure to, to meet all y'all oh you're always welcome to come back and uh susu baby thank you so much for jumping as a guest final thoughts and how can how can they find you uh i just want to say this was really interesting um this is it was nice talking to you all um i want to say if if there is anybody who um like is okay with that type of situation where a woman is the breadwinner i would just say do it for the right reasons otherwise it could be rooted in something that like winds up disastrous if you're just seeking validation to be with a certain type of person or if he's just in it for a certain type of reason just make sure it's something that you guys really both want um and my Instagram is really the only thing I'm on Instagram is I'm Renee Mackey. I M R E N E E M A C K I E. And that's it. Thank you so much, Susu Baby. But damn, Susu Baby, you just gave hope to all those weak ass men, depending on women. 
I mean, <laughs> if that's what if that's what you want, if that's something that because my my dad, my stepdad, is really really passive aggressive. Um, and my mom, he kind of retired, and my mom like has him working for her, and he, but he's kind of always been that way where he kind of just lets her walk over him and she's more of an alpha female and more assertive he has a good job he's a chemist but he's just kind of a pushover yeah. he, said he retired he right you said he, he retired from a job that he worked for a long time yeah probably. but and he did and he did do a good job and he, he he was making he was the breadwinner at one point but even when he was the breadwinner she still kind of walked over him and like Stuff that oh, he wanted okay. to do, he never really spoke oh, up. Just, so yeah, I just want to say, there yeah. is some men out yeah, there yeah, who yeah. are just kind of mm-hmm. peaceful like that, and it's not yeah. because they're like weaker mm-hmm. or like my stepdad was a good, a good, a good guy to me. He, my dad was my real dad was a horrible person, a pimp, a, a drug dealer, uh, in the mafia. My stepdad, a chemist, went to school, so he was the better man, but he was just a less aggressive man he wasn't you know so i want to say there is there is situations like that because i've seen all different types of people but um the reasons for him doing it is kind of because he can't doesn't want to stand up for himself but i know that there can be men out there who are just calm they were just raised that way you know people who are from the country people who you know like from all different walks of life who are just not aggressive Okay. All right. Sounds so, like this guy me. named Vato that we know. It's <laughs> 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 Vato. All right. Uh, thank you so much. <laughs> so maybe, but tell us quick uh, final thoughts. How can they find you? I thought we do, uh, Dirk. Final thoughts. Thank you so much. How can they find you, Dirk? Yeah, y'all can find us on the Manic Sophistication channel. You know, we'd be over there cracking jokes and stuff. But also, we're here quite often on Thursdays. We got the masculine mindset, so. We do a panel where we talk about standards and values from guys, dames on there, Manic, Paulo, uh, Will, and Joe. And, you know, we allow females to come up and ask us questions, too. So definitely check us out over there. But, uh, nah, great show. Will, I'm kind of upset. I, you, you, we need to start bringing some ratchet girls instead of all these, like, good females that got their stuff yeah. together so we can get cussed out a little bit. Nah, I'm joking. But, nah, great panel. Thanks again, Will. Great show. All right, thank you so much. Uh, Jerk, I'll pass it to you. Uh, Manic, final thoughts. How can they find you? Um, you can find me on IG primarily. I'm at the Manic Genius. Uh, I did have a question for um, Sahana because uh, nah, I don't know too much about I don't know too much about content <laughs> creation. <laughs> Plain landing so, sound. Uh, Will we gotta get that a sound effect? No, 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 no. I gotta get this off. When it comes to uh, uh, guys or uh, finances, what would be the lowest um, salary? range you would look for as a content creator i don't know as long as i think they have like the provider mindset and then um i feel like my lifestyle is not that expensive right now so as long as there's potential to grow and yeah i I I was looking for a number you can't get a a number you're a mathematician and you study economics (laughs) whatever you have a number in mind you don't feel comfortable saying it what you don't feel whatever's like, whatever's like top one two percent for the age groups fine like a hundred top one two percent for the age group oh, okay or five okay. i don't know <laughs> okay. there's, there's we'll so many the other chat. that they want to meet first okay five okay. million dollars <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay all right cool, cool cool all right all right thank you so much manic uh appreciate that uh thank you for jumping on as always and last but not least Oh, my man, Damien, final thoughts. How can, they, how can they find you, Damien? Yeah, it was a good show. You know, these ladies were phenomenal. Uh, they really had some really good points or what have you. Uh, uh, it, it's just, I don't know. It's just one of those things where it's always good, like like uh, Jerk said, to be engaging with people who can have spirited conversations, but respectful in the, in, in, in the same way. Mm-hmm. So I really appreciate that. Uh, if they want to find me, I... This is going to be a shock. I'm actually doing, I have a show, a, a channel called Can I Get Some Podcasts on YouTube. I'm actually doing a show this Tuesday, if you can believe it. I haven't done thing or something in a long time. But I'm actually going to have a show uh, on the Can I Get Some Podcast. Yeah, you can find me on no. IG, Can I Get Some Podcast. And uh, uh, it'll have the links to all the show and everything. If you try to Google it, I mean, I pull it up on YouTube, the algorithm going to be like, what the hell are you talking about? 
uh because it's been so long so uh can i get some podcasts my ig going there if you want to check out my show is going to be around uh surviving your past wildlife you know how to make sure your 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 the wildlife you lived in the past doesn't affect your future that kind of show so uh it's great to have you guys that's a good one you pulling up tj (laughs) no (laughs) all right thank you so much um and also, Jerk, just a response to what you said. I, I do try to get some ratchet girls on here, but uh, for some reason... <laughs> That's Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm equal opportunity, and I invite everyone. That's what, uh, for all the girls that's watching right now, ratchet, you know, don't feel like they don't want to... I don't invite them. No, I, I do invite, but... If you got a bullet I'm wound, gonna... come on up. Like sister on here. She, she'll cuss all of you out <laughs> multiple Your times. Your sister? <laughs> Get my oh, daughter got, on here. Have you ever stabbed your baby daddy or got a bullet hole? <laughs> yeah. Come on up. You're welcome. You guys are open to come on. Come on. I just I try. I try, but they just don't, don't show up. Uh, but nevertheless, I appreciate you guys. Ladies, thank you so much for the time. I do I really appreciate it. Fellas, as always, I always appreciate your perspective. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Shout out to all the ladies, follow them, and also all the fellas in their channels as well. Uh, we do this every single Wednesday, so make sure you guys like and subscribe so you get notifications. We do go live next time. But like, everybody, have a good night. Peace, y'all. Good Peace. night. Peace, y'all. Bye. Thank you so much. Sweet dreams.